Hey guys! Welcome in, please take off your shoes. I just vacuumed and I mopped the floors for you. Thanks, Elvis. You're welcome, Paul. I also got a bunch of cocktail shrimp and arranged them around a cocktail glass. I don't know if you guys would like that, but I thought it felt fitting for high class, high stakes bingo, which is an important part of our game tonight. Man, we usually just do pizza. I've never thought about going through the trouble for finger foods. Well, Mason, I thought to myself, you know, I never do like actual social parties, so I'm not ever gonna get to do cocktail shrimp normally, or like, like properly. So I'm gonna do it for the game. I've also got crackers with like, sort of expensive cheese on them. I think you're supposed to get a special kind of fancy cracker for that. Well, you must have to order those special, Larry, because I don't know where to find them. There's also some carrots and some assorted vegetables, but I just sort of put those on a plate because I started to get bored with the idea. But it was already too far to stop by the time that I got the vegetables. Honestly, this is really great. It's going to be the classiest role-playing night we've done so far. You should have put on a tux, because the big bingo bone heist is all about style. Okay, so sit down. Here's the thing. Each of you guys were browsing the Facebook marketplace to find criminal jobs to do. And you find a listing posted by a guy named Boss McBainer. He wants you to meet up with him in an old abandoned warehouse. Come alone, he says. Because he has the biggest criminal heist plan that you'll ever see. Alright, and we all assume that we're dumb enough to respond to this Facebook ad? Of course, Mason. Many hundreds of iterations of your characters perhaps saw this ad and thought it was dumb and they passed it up. But the guys that you're playing right now are the ones who took that chance and decided to meet at this warehouse. So it's like multidimensional fate, where 99% of the time I skip the adventure. Yeah, of course, Lowry. That's a thing that people believe in. This is a modern city setting, but there's such a thing as magic. It's just that barely anyone practices it because it's evil. Wait, Elvis, did we have the option to know magic? No, no, no. You're not evil enough. You don't know me, Elvis. I might be. No, trust me. You're not evil enough to know the magic in this setting. Magic in this setting is just so evil. Oh man, you don't know. Well, evil like how? What, what do people say? Like, evil like if you had a good relationship with your grandma, but every Christmas you don't call intentionally just because it makes her sad. Evil, like pure, just for its own sake, evil. So magic is real, but it makes your grandma sad. Yes. And you can't bring yourself to do that to grandma. Or at least you don't see the point. So, alright, got it. There is a fine line between this type of evil and just being outright stupid. This is Skeletor levels of stupid. That is the point, Lowry. It's exactly what I'm going for. So anyway, you guys all knock at the front door of this old abandoned warehouse, and you're let in one by one. There's one light on in the whole place, and it's hanging over a dingy poker table with half a bottle of whiskey and a bunch of playing cards scattered across it. Ah, oh, man, did you guys start drinking before I got here? The guy who let you in is a very, very old man. His eyelids droop down to his cheeks. He's got skin like a turkey. His bones are so knobbly that when his knees touch together, it sounds like billiard balls. He lifts up a trembling finger and says, So what if I have? Uh, what are you, the doctor? The doctor police? Yeah, I said no cops allowed on my Facebook ad. Yeah, now you gotta do drugs to prove you're not a cop. He pulls a butterscotch from his shirt pocket and hands it to you. Are there drugs in this? Because I'll do it if it's drugs. Uh, what? No, it's a butterscotch, stupid! Oh. Well, I don't like butterscotch, so... He spreads out a paper map of Disneyland on the table, trying desperately to keep the corners from curling up. Alright, here's the job. We're gonna bust into this mansion and steal the magic bones of Lord Bonesmell III! They're the most valuable and magical bones in the entire magical world! Wizards, warlocks, and those half-naked goat people that play the pan flute. They'll all pay top money for these. Absolute top. Think of a number. And they'll pay bigger than that. Gaze thoughtfully at the map. Ah, uh, yeah. I always knew it. Lord Bonesmell lives here in the castle in the center of the park, doesn't he? Uh, what? Oh, darn it, I got the wrong map. Uh, okay, never mind. He inarticulately sweeps the map off the table. Oh, that's important. His bone smells bones are in the basement. Yeah, and he's having one of his high stakes bingo tournaments tonight. All we gotta do is sneak in, and while his people are busy with the event, grab all the bones and make it out. All right, but I just want to say, I guarantee there's gold or something in that Disney castle. I, I said never mind that. Now listen, the first step is the most important part of the plan. It's crucial that you, you... <coughs> Boss McBainer collapses on the floor. Ah. Go and check his pulse. Uh, Mr. Boehner, sir? He's extremely dead. In fact, he's already cold. You've never seen anyone die this fast. I don't think he's breathing. 
As a criminal, do you think that Mr. Boner legally rented this place, or are we all trespassing? Oh, well, I am actually Mr. Boehner's nephew, and I can tell you for a fact that he did not rent this place legally, and he doesn't want to be resuscitated. So we should just take his stuff and do the heist without him. Oh, well, sorry to hear about your loss. Yeah, me and Uncle Boehner, we used to go fishing every Thursday. The man was crazy about fishing. He's always saying, one day, one day, Paul, I'm going to land a mackerel. Isn't a mackerel like an ocean fish? That painter, he he didn't know he didn't know mackerels from potatoes. Yeah, well, take all the time you need, unless the heist is time sensitive, in which case hurry up. Why, well, I, I used to go to the park with good old Uncle Boehner every weekend in the summers, and, and as you can see, I'm just broken up about losing the man. I, uh, originally, bless his heart, we were all going to split the heist evenly, but because Boehner was such a giving guy, I, I think that he would be fine if I took his portion to pay for his funeral. My name is Paul Boehner. Don't worry. I'm the boss now. Well, I'm Mason. I crack locks and stuff. The Facebook post didn't actually ask for any skills, but I do have some. That's why I, that's why I answered the thing. My name is Lowry. I didn't graduate high school, and I will openly admit in any interview that I don't go in early. So I got fired from my last job at the video store because I was selling liquor without a license. And because it was a video store, they don't sell liquor. If this job doesn't work out, I was planning to rob a gas station. Well, you guys just sound like exactly the people that Boehner was looking for, and it is my pleasure to take over this crack team. Clearly, Uncle Boehner did his homework and got guys that were just, that were gonna go the extra mile. And his last gift to me is you guys. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I, you know, he actually didn't respond to any of my messages, so I thought that, uh... No, I mean, I mean, you're on Facebook. He probably combed through your profile and everything. I was actually using my sister's Facebook page. Well, obviously he saw right through that. I mean, you didn't write like a lady, so he knew that you... He, he knew. So what was his big plan then? What's this big heist? Oh, it's it's huge. It's going to be a huge heist. And you guys might need to invest some in the heist. So be prepared to spring your bank account. But first, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna scope things out. Uh, Elvis, I checked Boehner's pockets to see if he brought any notes, like actual maps that we would need or anything. You find an ungodly amount of butterscotch, and buried deep inside all that are some note cards. It looks like it was to remind him what his plan was in case he forgot. Ah, good old Uncle Boehner, always keeping notes. You know, I always said don't do this. It makes it really easy for the police to throw you in jail if you get arrested. You glance over them, and actually it's really sparse. In bullets it just says, go to basement... Do bones. Uh, and it looks like he took my advice and didn't write down anything terribly incriminating. You couldn't get busted on this. A genius, Uncle Boehner, in his own way. But on the back of one of the cards, it looks like he handprinted a list of road directions from Google Maps. Ah, uh, but he forgot one of the key details. All right, get out my phone. Where's the destination? The destination is basically this warehouse but it looks like he just copied the directions backwards because the origin point is an address up in the hills where the wealthy evil wizards live. Okay, so either this is his house and he's an evil wizard, or this is where we're supposed to go. Oh yeah, so the plan. All right, so anyway, definitely the plan is pretty involved. Like, I won't spell it all out at once. It won't make sense until you see the pieces in action. Uncle Boehner has been planning this out for years. But, you know, he, he was really tight-lipped about a lot of this and uh, didn't like to discuss it, wouldn't want me to discuss it. So first thing we need to do is go to this address. All right, and what are we going to do there? All right, listen, I just told you that I was not going to spell out the plan and you completely disobeyed a direct order. This is going to be a major, like, problem in our relationship. Yeah, so. okay, okay, but step one of the plan... I, I told you, to it's be. not going to make sense until we actually get there and it all falls into but, place. But it's not a plan if we get there and we don't know what's going on. Okay, but on. you see... Uh, okay, but you see, all right, we're going to get there, and then you're going to see, it's going to make sense. Uh, look, I'm not good at describing things visually, so you're going to have to see it, and then after you see it, I'll say, you see that? The, the plan is to interact with that, I mean, okay? I don't, uh, okay, I, I guess, I guess I'll go to a second location with a complete stranger in a criminal organization of some sort. Yeah, right, okay, so yeah, you'll do that, and then we're going to, we're going to go to Lord Bonesmell's mansion at some point during all of this, and uh, he's got a bingo tournament. And then bingo, bingo, it's all going to make sense. You're going to see. You know, I've got an idea. What if we don't do the heist? What if we all just rob a gas station together? I've always wanted to do this with friends. I don't want to rob a gas station. I mean, then I'm not going to get to pick any locks. What's the point of that? Besides, high effort stuff is always worth more money. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works, you know, Lowry? I don't know. 
I mean, if you think about it, it's like four years to get a teaching degree, and then I'm pretty sure that you just don't get paid anywhere near the effort that you put in. And plus, like, if you think about it, going to rob a bunch of gas stations in one night, like, think about how many gas stations you could rob at once. That's kind of high effort, and you kind of get a lot of money for it, you know? So, college versus robbing a gas station, I think that I'm the winner here. Larry, your serial robbery idea is genius, but pedestrian. Let's try and aim higher. Well, it has to be pedestrian because I can't afford a car. That's the only reason why I haven't taken on this plan so far. But if you guys have a car, or if you guys own a motorcycle, oh, we could do these sweet drive-by robberies with machine guns, and then we could rob, like, armored vans and then drive into sewer drains. It'd be so cool. Well, think about this, okay? You do this big heist, and then you could buy a motorcycle, like, top of the line, and you can afford ammo, too. People always overlook the cost of ammo. Ah, man. So... Yeah, I didn't think about the cost to buy an ammo. I also didn't buy a gun. I was just going to put my finger in my pocket and be like, look out, I'm going to shoot you. Yeah, so we'll start baby steps first, a big, like, elaborate heist, and then, and then you can work your way up to robbing gas stations. Mason, how about you? What, what is your dream that you're chasing? I want to own my own hot dog cart. Oh, and then when Lowry drives up to rob me, I'm going to get in a wicked shootout with him. And then it's going to turn out that my hot dog cart has missiles built into it, and I blow Lowry up. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh, because my motorcycle is going to have a force field. You're stupid, Mason. My machine guns shoot armor-piercing bullets. Well, I'm going to have special bunker buster missiles that blow up force fields. Well, I'm going to use my money to buy a laser point defense system that shoots down missiles before they hit me. Well, my missiles will be made out of mirrors, so they reflect your lasers back at you, killing you instantly. Lowry, what now? Well, my motorcycle has a nuclear reactor, so when it explodes, it blows up the whole city and you die too, stupid. You're just going to kill yourself, Mason. Well, gentlemen, this is all extremely plausible and fills me with hope for this mission. So, uh, first things first, let's just get to this address and then let's talk about the amount of money that you're going to have to invest in the plan. Okay, but like I said, I hope you have a car because otherwise we have to walk. Yeah, I had to catch the last bus out here and then I had to wait around for a couple of hours, so. Yeah, not to worry, you know, a, a guy like me would have a car. I take everyone out to the parking lot where a beat up old 90s era hatchback is waiting. The engine will barely turn over, but I get us going. See, gentlemen, a stick shift is more responsive. Today's kids are all gonna forget the art of powerful driving with their automatic windows and emission standards. So hey, Mason, how exactly do you get locks open? Well, I got this really good power drill. Bzz, bzz. Sweet. The professional's real choice. That's some top-notch locksmith stuff right there. You guys head out in the hills and up the rolling countryside. You pull up to the mansion and you see people are just driving through the front gate. They're getting out of their cars after parking in a lot, walking to the front door, and then handing something to the doorman. Then they go in. Everyone who arrives is wearing rich black robes. Okay, what now, Paul? I'm seeing it, but I, I don't get the next step of the plan. An excellent question. Right, and bear in mind, again, I'm very poor at explaining things. So, uh, you know, but obviously you've never done a big heist like this before, or the next step would be obvious. Well, yeah, I, I mean, um, I've always dreamed of, like, cracking a safe at a casino. Bzz, bzz. But if I had to guess, I bet we could put on some robes and then sneak in. Yeah, that was actually exactly what Uncle Boehner said that we'd do. You might be a natural at this, Mason. All right, great. So all we have to do is sneak up on someone, point our finger at them and pretend it's a gun and tell them to give us their robes. Well, I, I mean, we could just probably procure our own robes without immediately resorting to violence. Oh, you brought your own robes? Well... You know? Because I guess Uncle Boehner did fill you in on all the details. Well, I mean, sure. I got myself some robes, obviously. I mean, like, it's it's in the trunk. In the spare tire well. It would be a hassle to get it out, so don't worry. But, uh, I assume you guys didn't bring robes. Well, no one told us to. Like I said, he, he wouldn't respond to my Facebook messages. Well, you were supposed to have your own robes. I mean, absolutely, it, it's clearly part of the plan. I mean, if you guys had had experience with this, you would have known to bring your own robes. I mean, any wizard mansion, you everyone wears robes. I brought mine. They're in the trunk. But, okay, look, there's no point in getting out just one pair of robes. So you guys, you've just really let me down. Man, I I knew I knew I was going to get fired from another job. Yeah, I wouldn't have signed up if I knew there was a dress code. Larry doesn't do dress code. Look, I'm sure it was in the fine print somewhere. Did you guys click the link at the uh, side and the, it's in small text? I pull out my phone. I don't see where it says anything about the robes. Can you show where that ah. is? Ah, uh, well, I, I could have sworn, man, Uncle Boehner, he was going senile. He was talking about the robes all this time, and, and uh, 
curse his Alzheimer's. You know, he had Alzheimer's, by the way. Just, just tragic. He did a lot of heists in his youth. One every Christmas. And I, it was a big family thing. We'd all get together for Christmas and rob a bank. Now, I was hoping the heist would help him get back into a state of lucidity, but, you know, tragedy struck and he died. We never could have predicted this. Okay, so it's not our fault. We're still good robbers for first time, right? So what if we do Lowry's plan? We'll just beat those guys up and take the robes. Uh, okay, uh, well, we beat those guys up and, and, and we're trying to lay low and sneak in, Mason, right? What, what kind of insane suggestion is that? Uh, hang on. Google, find a party store. Your phone provides directions to a party store. Okay, see? Robes. We can just get robes. We don't have to kill people for robes. I'm, they cost like 20 bucks. 20 bucks? Paul, come on. All right, all right, Lowry. You just let me get the robes, okay? I get robes all the time. You would not believe how good I am at collecting robes because so many uptown parties like this require you to infiltrate by wearing robes. I've done this kind of heist a thousand times. Wait, well, if you've done this a thousand times, how come you don't have a bunch of robes of your That's own? That's because there's a lot of elements that go into these robe things. Like, sometimes they wear different colors. I have a red robe, but these guys are wearing black. Pure black has been out of style for ten years, all right? And and, and, and I, there's another step to my plan. I resell them, okay? That's part of the trick. You do crime in a certain set of robes, and it's a good idea to resell the robes afterward. Or better, return them to the store for even a full money. And, and then the cops... And the evil wizards, they can't find you because they can't link you to the robes that you did the crime in. Okay, basic high stuff. All right, all right, you're learning. I drive the party to the store. All right, you head down to the nation's leading party store. Party catastrophe. It's open for another 15 minutes. Perfect. Okay, guys. So there's a trick to buying robes. To buying anything, really. And I'm going to show you. Elvis, I go in the store, grab three sets of cheesy Halloween robes, then go to the register. Oh, can I get nunchucks? Nunchucks? Yeah, nunchucks. You know, in case a fight breaks out. Okay, first of all, nunchucks are a movie prop. No one really uses them to fight. Bruce Lee did. Bruce Lee was in movies! No one uses nunchucks in real life. And second of all, we are trying not to be caught. If a fight breaks out, we have or we've failed the infiltration. <sighs> Fine. But you're going to feel really dumb when a fight breaks out and we don't have nunchucks. All right, go to the register. Hi, I'd like to buy these three robes, but I saw there was a coupon online for a buy one, get two free type of deal. So I would like to not pay for the other two of these robes. The cashier goes, oh, do you have that coupon with you? No, I just saw it online, but it's a really good deal. So I figured you'd be aware of it since a lot of people would be taking advantage of it. I mean, I guess it's the off season, but you should know. Well, I'm not aware of any coupon. It's for... definitely online. Listen, do you have the coupon? I, I can... saw the coupon before I came in here to shop. And I, I would not have wasted my time coming in here if it wasn't for the coupon. Do you understand okay, me? if you can show me the coupon, then I- It's an look, online I coupon. It. it should be in your computer system. You could look my it up. My register isn't, like, built into the internet. Don't it's, tell it's me that they're not system. in the system. How do you scan them in, then? They're in the cloud on the internet where you post them. I would expect that an employee would know that their store's coupons are- well, uh, this Is this not your job? Can I speak to your manager? Sir, I, I just need you to show me a coupon. Can I speak- to your manager, what is your name? I, I am the manager, sir. I'm the only one working tonight. Okay, what is your district phone number? I am going to call the district manager because this is just unbelievable. I am a regular customer, and I have never been so badly well, mistreated. look, sir, I... Give me your I, phone you can... number for the district manager. I am going to tell them about you. And you know what, actually? I'm going to call the police, too. You... Why would you call the police? To get an official statement in. I, I, I so if I have to go I, sir, to court with your sir, company I about this, it's going to be on the record somewhere. I, I, I don't... Sir, the store is closing, and I need you All right, to I'm leave. calling the cops. Did you just raise your hand to hit me? Did you just raise your hand to hit me? I'm telling okay, the police. you know what? Look, fine. Okay? They're super cheap. I can ring up three for one. Fine. They're in the discount aisle anyway. It, thanks. She rings you up. Ah, oh, thanks. You know, I'm really sorry. You know, it's just... I've been ripped off before, you know, it's like, I don't want to get ripped off again. It makes me feel dumb. You know how it is. I'm sorry uh -huh. to get on the case. She gives you the receipt and then locks the door behind you as you leave. All right, so Lowry, the next time you feel the need to rob a gas station, reflect on what you just saw me do. We're going to return these robes for refunds and conveniently lose the receipt that shows that we got them for free. We're going to make money on this, see? That's how you rob a store. That's dumb. You didn't even get any cash. And you didn't even have a gun. A robbery would have been so much cooler. Man... Well, you know, it's like they say, you can lead a fish to water, but you can't make them drink. Anyway, we got our robes, let's go. I think they say you can lead a horse to water. Yeah, you can lead a horse to water, but what's the point? I mean, if you, if you lead the horse to water, then 
Well, that doesn't make any sense. Make drink. Because horses drink water eventually when they get thirsty. I mean, like, a fish is so used to water, it's oblivious to it. It doesn't even think about it. Tragic, really. It says a lot about all of us. Eventually, your engine turns over and you guys get back up the hills with your Halloween robes. All right, pull the car over right next to one of the fancy rides these people came in. Sure, you park right between a Ferrari and a McLaren F1. Open the door a little too fast and hit the McLaren. You ding one of the most expensive cars in the world. Ah, shoot. Well, I'm sure that'll buff out. Uh, all right, boys, get your robes on. You throw on your cheap Halloween robes. Now, how exactly are you going to do this? All right, boys, listen up. So the way to get into places like this is to walk up behind another group that's getting in legit. And then as they're being checked and the guard is busy, just walk in ahead of them as though you got cleared to do so. Don't stand behind and don't wait. Act like you're more important than everyone. If the guard calls at you, don't turn around. You belong. It doesn't even occur to you to think he's talking to you. Remember, the staff are the help, and you're the guest of honor. So that's it? We're just walking in? You're going to be floored by how easily this works. Everyone else's robes look really nice. These things are like paper thin. All right, look at me, okay? I'll have you know these robes are imported directly from France. They're made from the hair of the Golden Adelaide Beagle. The waiting list to get one of these would normally require at least three years. They're handmade by a blind yodeling Sherpa with 60 years of experience in the craft. Let me speak to your manager. Better yet, the district manager. Won't these people be the district manager? Or above him? Uh, yeah, you know what, you're right. Just always refer to a higher authority, and if there is no higher authority, run. All right, got it. Lead on. Thank you, I will. It's exactly like Uncle Boehner planned it. This is how he got in the World Series, by the way. The man didn't believe in hopping fences. He believed that fences were there to keep out the employees. All right, so you pull up behind three women in dark robes. There's a young one, a middle-aged one, and an old one. They hand the guard an envelope. All right, just walk in without stopping. Don't make eye contact with anyone. Don't act like I'm not sure about this. I belong, and the guard is mistaken. All right, you walk right by him. The guard goes, Hey, you have to... Hey, sirs? Sirs? The oldest of the ladies you passed goes, Well, hurry up! Is our invitation valid, or do we have to talk to your manager? The guard goes, Oh, 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 right, right, sorry, madam. And he turns his attention away from you. You see, guys? The secret is, everyone is busy and has lives and doesn't have time to make you the center of attention. That's why everyone in power is a weird sociopath, because everyone else is too busy and doesn't want to go through the hassle to stop them. Trust me, any day now, I'm going to make it big. I don't know. I feel like you're going to have to sell a lot of Halloween robes if you're going to move up in the world. Well, that's obviously why we're doing the bone heist, Mason, to get rich. Wait, I thought the bones had magical powers. You know, like, make a psychic gun to rob a gas station. What? Well, yeah, I mean, maybe. Certainly that's what some people would do with magic powers, rob a gas station. But magic is only limited by your imagination. For example, you could use magic to scry for someone who would pay top dollar to buy these magic bones from you. But then we wouldn't have the bones. We wouldn't need them. We'd have tons of money to buy more magic things, and then we'll resell the magic and become magic retail giants. Like the Target or Amazon of magic but bones. But people who have the magic that, that want the bones should have the magic to rip us off, right? Uh... You know what, these are fine details. And my Uncle Boehner, he was never really one for fine details in a plan. All right, they call it counting your lizards before they hatch. You don't open a pet store and just sell eggs. Right, yeah, you buy a lizard cage first, and then some lizard food. And then after you kill a couple of lizards, you learn how to take care of them, and then you sell the live yes, ones. Yes, you're stretching the metaphor, but yes, that's kind of the right. The ladies you passed enter the building and start walking down the hall. They're chatting noisily. I sure hope the competition is a lot more stiff this year. I'm getting a little tired of winning all the time. <laughs> they all cackle. Of course, Martha, but that didn't stop you from peeking. Well, Lucinda, when it's right there to see, you can't help yourself. Well, what was the portent this year? Well, girls, let's just say if the prospects were dim, my hip would have been acting up too much for me to come. <laughs> all right, guys. These lovely ladies know where they're going, so let's follow them, figure out where the crowds are going to be, and then start looking for the basement. You guys follow the ladies for a while, and as you come to a set of large double doors, a guard in an old-timey royal-looking outfit stops you and says, Excuse me, we got notice that someone came through without displaying an invitation. Could I please ask you all to present your invitations again? Again? We just went through this all of five seconds ago. Sorry, sir. It's just we can't let anyone in without an invitation. Or what? If someone sneaks into this little soiree, they'll stand out like a Hershey bar and an assorted box of imported chocolates. Just look for someone wandering around in a bunch of robes that were clearly bought last minute from a costume store. 
the guard goes silent for a moment. Now look, it's not exactly easy to reach into my pockets in this thing, so if you could please step aside and use a bit of common sense to profile the people that you're looking for, obviously none of us look like we wandered in from off the streets. Uh, uh, well, it's just a matter of formal procedure. What is your name? Lord Bonesmell wouldn't appreciate I if asked I- asked your name. We'll see what Lord Bonesmell has to say when he hears that I've been hassled by guards because they couldn't tell a guest from a party crasher. You know, when I went to the high-stakes bingo tournament of Jafar Mustafar, his security had actually memorized the photos of the guests. We didn't need to present invitations because they recognized your face. One of the ladies in front of you says, and now listen here, if this becomes a thing and we waste another minute, my invitation is going to be the last thing that you ever see. We were last year's winners. If you don't recognize us, I swear on my mother's grave, I'll give you something to remember. Another lady says, Oh, don't get mother involved. You know how she is when she's woken from her rest. The old lady says, Do what would you know? She always takes my side. You'd appreciate it more if you'd live up to her expectations. The guard says, uh, look, uh, all right, none of you match the description. I, I, I think I made a mistake to bother you. Please go ahead. The guard stands aside and lets you in. The oldest woman in the group ahead walks up to you, Paul, and she goes, That was some good carroting. I know you're full of crap, but I like your style. These tournaments need more bold personalities. You can come sit next to us. I've got a plan to win the whole shebang. Why, thank you, madam. It would be my pleasure. So you won the last thing, huh? We certainly did. And if you play your bingo cards right, maybe you'll win too. I'll let you in on a little secret. There's no rules, so there's no such thing as cheating. Wait, is that like an official rule? That there's no rules? Because I always hate that. That's an oxymoron or a paradox. Sure, yes. There's an absence of rules. Who cares what you call it? The point is, there's no rules and the guards are ordered not to enforce any once the game starts. Wait, so how do you know that you've won? If there's no rules, you could just call yourself the winner at any time. <laughs> I think you may be asking the right questions, young man. You've won when everyone else agrees that you have. Then, madam, I'm going to announce right now, we've won, if you would agree. She gives you a pinch on the cheek. You'll get it soon enough, but save your triumph for the starting gun. You can't win anything until the game has begun. You guys follow the old women to their seats. It's a huge dining hall with a bunch of beautifully carved wooden tables, luxurious tapestries and the kind of hors d'oeuvres that you'd have to pay hundreds of dollars for, all laid out neatly within grabbing distance. The old woman scoops up a handful of some kind of beautifully prepared eel with a sheet of sugar glass on it, and she begins eating them like crackers. If I were you, I'd eat what you can before the game begins. Start shoveling food into my jacket pockets underneath the robe. That's a good idea. I should have brought my purse. Curse the lack of foresight. The room is filled up with all kinds of crazy characters. There's a guy in a pointy wizard hat. You're pretty sure that man has goat legs. Over there, that guy's just a floating head. Everyone here is obviously magically gifted in some way, or in ownership of some kind of magical artifact. There's a guy with a medallion, and when he spins a little piece on it, his hair gets bigger and he starts talking in a deeper voice. Paul, I don't want to alarm you, but I think if we actually play bingo with these people, we're going to get banished to the Shadow Realm. Right you are, Lowry. Not to worry, we'll slip out before things get too intense. When's all this supposed to start, anyway? A bald old guy walks up on stage at the front of the dining hall, and everyone goes quiet. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the second annual High Stakes Bingo Tournament. I'd particularly like to welcome the Berthley sisters, making their triumphant return after being the only survivors of the previous event. The ladies you're sitting with wave and give a little hoot. A pleasure winning, Lord Bonesmell. Got to love the Berthley sisters. And now I know you're all eager to get into it, so I'll start by refreshing you on the rules. Well, that's it for the rules. So, go ahead and grab your cards. Lord Bonesmell walks over to one of those little bingo rollers. He turns it over a few times, grabs a bingo ball, looks at it, and announces, B-17! One of the sisters next to you leaps up to her feet and yells, Bingo! Another voice yells in the room, Hey, she's cheating! What? How dare you? Why don't you come down here and say that to my face? Then someone throws a knife and the entire room explodes into chaos and magic. People are letting loose gouts of flames and lightning. Two or three people fly up in the air and start telekinetically tossing chairs around. A dimensional portal opens up and a dozen tentacles suck someone inside. Oh god, dive under the table. Follow Mason. We could have just robbed a gas station. The attendants never do this. They did say it was high stakes, Lowry. You knew what you signed up for. 
You hear a tremendous roar, and when you peek out from under the tablecloth, you see a triceratops in the middle of the room. It seems frightened and confused. All right, guys, move your knees. Go, 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 go to the exit. We make a beeline for the door as fast as we can crawl. You guys scurry and crawl for your lives. Reach the door and let yourselves out. The guard from earlier is just standing there, and he makes eye contact with you. Straighten myself out, flatten my robes. On the other side of the door, you hear a calamitous thump, 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 crash. Sounds like the dinosaur made a run for it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Where are your restrooms? The guard says, aren't you supposed to stay in the bingo hall? I don't believe that there's any rule that says as such, and nor were there rules saying the guards are required to survive. Point at him with finger guns. Don't make me shoot you. The guard points down the hall. Thank you, my good man. I hustle down the hall. Thank you. Whatever they're paying you, it's not enough. And away you guys go, towards your true destiny and target, Lord Bone Smells Magic Bones. I like how Larry and I decided to play these dumb criminal characters because Elvis gave us a dumb premise. But Paul, you decided to play the guy that takes advantage of the whole situation. Oh no, Mason. The character I'm playing is stupid too. He shows up to an obvious scam without knowing a thing, thinking he's gonna be the one doing the scamming. I'm playing a guy who's been ripped off more times than he can count, and he thinks this makes him an expert on ripping people off. To be honest, it's really nice playing a dumb guy sometimes. So long as at least one of you is pulling the leash anyway. Man, Larry, I've been in some games where I played the dumb guy in a group that wanted to methodically solve everything. You know what's funny in those groups? Everyone is the dumb guy. I don't follow. Okay, in a group that wants to slow down and make sure they get all the right answers before moving forward, everyone spends a lot of time on the sidelines doing nothing, trying to hash out an agreement. The dumb guy does nothing or gets kicked out of the group because he's too dumb. The supposedly smart guys ask questions and roll dice for knowledge checks, but fundamentally also do nothing. Everyone does nothing. Everyone's the dumb guy. Oh. That's kind of rhetorically stupid to put it that way. See, because if everyone's the same, then everyone's the lowest common denominator, which no, is... I mean, I get that. I get it. It's like... Just, you can't redefine the dumb guy archetype to mean the guy who's not moving the plot forward and then say everyone's the dumb guy. Yeah, dumb guys can move the plot forward too. Instead of checking for traps, you just follow your gut and do things. Who would trap where they live? They just kill themselves. Never mind the three or four traps that we saw earlier. Someone must have set those up to catch the bad guy on his way out of the house. Okay, ignoring that I'm trying to redefine a thing to sound clever, I mean... You get what I mean, right? Like, it's fun to be the dumb guy, but you need at least one man of action to tell you what to do. Or, or like, otherwise you're just intentionally misunderstanding directions, and, and that can be annoying sometimes. Well, good. Uh, great. I'm glad that intentionally misunderstanding directions is what we're going for this game. And in pursuit of that, Paul, you guys are headed towards the bathrooms. Right, Elvis, yes. All right, you two. So I take it you memorized the map that Uncle Boehner provided us. You mean the map of Disneyland? I thought he said oh, to right. forget that. Yes, it was just a map of Disneyland. Well, no problem, because all we have to do is find the basement. That's what Uncle Boehner said, and that's where the bones are gonna be. Before that, can we actually find the bathroom, please? Lowry, what? Did, did you not go to the bathroom before we got in here? I didn't have to go until just now. I mean, it's not like you can plan these things that far ahead. I just figured we'd be here for a few more hours, and I kind of have to go now. I'm taking care of it now. All right, Elvis, can we find the bathroom? It's a house, and a big one too, so the guard just pointing you in a direction actually wasn't very helpful. It could be any of these doors, or in a totally different room. Alright, look, Lowry, just go in the potted plant. Are you sure he ought to do that? Because I know it's no rules, but there's like, a limit to being dignified. Mason, if it becomes a problem, don't worry, I got it all figured out. Lowry, just pee in the plant, don't worry. Boehner and I discussed this before the heist. We plan out every single detail. Well, I guess if you planned it out, all this I pee in the plant. Sure. And while you're doing your thing, a guard rounds the corner and sees you. Hey! Hey, what are you doing there? I'm excuse peeing. me! I'm peeing. You excuse I'm me! I'm peeing! Excuse me! What are you doing? We're in the middle of a big bingo tournament, and I was under the impression that the guards were not supposed to interfere. Well? I'm peeing. We're not supposed to interfere, but I don't think Lord Bonesmell would like you peeing in his potted plants. Is that what you see here? Is that what you think this is? Alright, I'm done. That's good. You're too late, you pathetic lackey. You can't stop what's about to transpire. What are you talking about? It looks like what you're doing has already transpired. How little you know. My friend here has ingested a potion of phenomenal power. Whenever he relieves himself onto a plant, 
Those plants will, within 10 or 15 minutes, spring to life as horrific man-eating abominations, which will destroy anyone foolish enough to cross us. You're directly interfering with our bingo strategy. We got bingo, by the way, and we're gonna win. Well, that... that's all fine. But, but that, sir, is a plastic plant. Oh. Yes. Well, it's very convincing. What is this made out of? Well, our grand scheme is ruined. That's all right. We still have plan B. I pull out my drill. Bzz, bzz. So, sirs, are you done with this plastic plant, or shall I fetch a sharpie and have you mark any future receptacles of your great evils? Produce a sharpie at once, you underling. Very well, sir. He pulls a sharpie out of his pocket and hands it to you. Thank you. I will draw a little mustache on anything that needs to be disposed. It's the least I can ask for, sir. Actually, while you're here, plan B does require us to get to the basement. Can you direct us to there? Bzz, bzz. Oh, the basement? No one is allowed in the basement, sir. We are well aware of that, hence the reason we're going to the basement. Everyone else is foolishly staying within the guidelines that they assume have been laid out even though they're explicitly not there. It's perfect to set up our grand scheme. I understand your logic, sir, but Lord Bonesmell would be displeased. Did I ask you what you- listen to me! Do as I say, or I'll turn you into a basement! You're gonna get the drill, bud. Bzzz. I don't want to hear about what Lord Bonesmell's gonna think. He's gonna think that I won the bingo tournament. But, sir, Lord Bonesmell's wrath is terrible and, and without equal. I have had entirely too much water to drink. If you keep this up, I'm gonna find out where you live, and I'm gonna pee on your lawn. Point my fingers at him. Or we could just expedite this. I've used these for more trivial reasons. I once used them to steal a bag of chips at a gas station and a hot dog. Sir, please... I respect your wraths as well. If you dare, the basement is down the hall. Take a left, then a right, and it's immediately past the bathroom. You won't be able to miss either. I can't miss with these fingers either. You want to see them in action? Uh, we, we actually don't have time for that. No, it's great. They shoot these, uh, like, sweet fireworks. It's pretty awesome, and they blow up food carts. Yeah, yeah, it's, Not if uh, the food truck uh, is fire retardant, though. All right, Does Mason, that's... Does the phone that's... work on transdimensional magic power? Because my fireworks attack from a different dimension. Oh, your powers do sound formidable and terrible, Lords. The foam does work on transdimensional power, yeah. No, it doesn't. You're just making that up. How does that even Indeed, work? we are vastly powerful, beyond your meager comprehension. And you've narrowly evaded death by cooperating with us. And no, you were gonna- you we're just gonna go complete our evil scheme. Now, try and swirl my cheap Halloween robes dramatically as I turn away and I pull the guys with me. Ow, stop. You're gripping too hard. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on! Elvis, as soon as we get out of eye shot from that guard, I draw mustaches on basically everything. Okay, so that guard will think he has to throw away everything. For all he knows, I peed on all of it. Can you please hurry up with this? We need to complete the heist while the bingo tournament is still on! You know, we could steal his stuff, too. With what? Do you have a wheelbarrow handy? Maybe the guard will get us one. We're pushing our luck as it is! W would you just- Okay, he's not even gonna see the mustache on the tapestries. Let's just go through their garbage after tonight. I bet we could pick up all the stuff they threw away. But Actually, that's a really good idea. Uh, all right, go on putting mustaches on everything. Let's just pick up the pace a little bit, though, okay? You can be more sloppy. Elvis, I mustache anything that looks like it has value. You don't have very long to go, but there is a lot of valuable stuff. You arrive in a long hallway. At the opposite end is a velvet rope blocking off a set of stairs. A guard is standing there watching you zig back and forth across the halls, defacing everything. Just before that, there's a big sign indicating a bathroom to your left. All right, when we get close enough to the guard... Good evening, sir. I am Lord Paul Boehner. Oh, hang on. This face looks really valuable. Just gotta draw a mustache on that. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, all right, we're here. That's enough. But think of how much stuff we could fit inside of it. It's gonna help us out. Yeah, well, okay, that's true. All right, that's the last one. No more, please. Fine. Anyway, good evening, sir. Is this the path to Lord Bonesmell's basement? Uh, it is. No one's allowed down here, though. And what, you believe that? Yeah, idiot. We're gonna blow you up with the magic power drill. Bzz, bzz. Well, we're, uh, we're not you actually watch out. gonna- It's full of magic. My friend has been driven crazy by magical fumes. He will do it. But let me ask you something. Have you ever stopped to wonder why Lord Bonesmell is the way he is? You mean all-powerful? Uh, well, it's not really my station to presume much about the Lord Bonesmell. Ah, oh, well, that just won't do. I heard he's gay. Thank you. Thank you, Lowry and Mason, for your contributions to this conversation. Oh, you've heard that rumor too, have you? I'm sure it has nothing to do with his power. I mean, everyone is talking about it, yeah. Well, we're not supposed to gossip, but just to clear the air, I don't think that Lord Bonesmell is interested in romance at all. The incident with Lady Death Creeper aside. Isn't being a bachelor not interested in romance, like, code for gay? 
I mean, there's other codes, but have you ever noticed him wearing heels? In fact, I think I saw him walk out on stage in a dress. That's like a dead giveaway. That was a robe. He was wearing robes. Mason, that's exactly what a priest would tell you, but look at them. Gay as a sunflower. We're wearing robes. Now look here, it's Lord Bone Smell's business who he loves or who he doesn't love. Being the most evil person in existence, I'm not sure that moral questions are a part of it, but he just never has visitors, that's all. Oh, but he just happens to walk around in robes all the time. Actually, he usually walks around in sweatpants, or sometimes just his underwear, but it is my lord's prerogative. Gentlemen, we have gotten so far off into the weeds on this, I think I'm hearing banjo music. Sir, the point I was gonna make is that Lord Bone Smell is a go-getter of sorts. With go-getter friends who think only for themselves and only of themselves. And you're standing here telling me what Lord Bone Smell would want you to do. Well, I think he told me that no one was supposed to go down in the basement, so I'm not really being speculative on that. But that's exactly it. What is your name, sir? It's Mary, my lord. Mary, have you ever wondered how Lord Bone Smell feels about people who don't act in their own best interests? Uh, well, I believe he despises them, sir. He blows them up with magic. He does! I once saw him turn a guy into a kite, and then he flew the kite into space. That could have happened. The point is, tonight's a night when there's supposed to be no rules, and here you are, trying to lay down rules. I don't think that's something that Lord Bone Smell's gonna respect. Well, why not? They're Lord Bone Smell's rules. Listen to me, Mary. We want to go see the basement. Lord Bone Smell said we could. We're doing a tour of the house. We were told there'd be a tour, and that the basement was gonna be the best part of the tour. Yeah, and so far it sucks. A tour? I, I thought you were just saying not to do what Lord Bone Smell said to do, but he, he said that there was going to be a tour. Oh, is that what you took away from this, Mary? If that's what you think I meant, it's no wonder you're still just a subordinate. Mary, what is it that you want to do with your life? Well, I, I, I want to go on living and not be killed by Lord Bone Smell. Do you want to be an evil wizard? Because cause that's why you joined this gig, right? Shazam. I joined because I need to pay rent, and the Lord offers healthcare coverage, full-time hours, and vacation. The most evil man in the world offers all that? Well, yes, and I believe that he takes his home security rather seriously, so why not? What's the application process like? Is he hiring? What would it be like if you applied? Well, you would have to talk to the head of guards about applications. What exactly is the pay? Not that we're interested, because we're fantastically wealthy, right? Uh, you know, but, but Mary, you don't want to just be a guard all your life. You want more out of life, right? I guess... I would like to be head guard someday. All right, there you go, Mary. So head guard. How do you get to be head guard? How'd, how'd the head guard get to be head guard? How do you think he did it? I don't really know. He was here before I was hired, and I, I assumed it was a seniority thing. Seniority? No. Mary, this is an evil wizard establishment. You get promoted by killing the current head guard. Really? Absolutely. That's how I do it. This job keeps getting better and better. I'd be in charge in no time. Well, uh... They didn't say anything about that during orientation. And Mary, who designed orientation? Well, I thought it was Lord Bone Smell, but uh, oh my goodness, it was the head guard. Exactly. It, it was. It was staring me in the face this whole time. Can we go down in the basement now? Well, I mean, this is a big deal, but all, all this aside, you're but still I brought not really- But I a camera, and Lord Bone Smell said I could take pictures. You are definitely not supposed to take I pictures. I want to take pictures. It's my vacation. I have a camera. I want to take pictures. You'd better not upset Mason. He's got a magic drill and he's insane from the drill fumes. I had a camera with terrible camera fumes. Why would I even bring my camera with leaky fumes if there's nothing to take pictures of? This is so stupid. I'm going to use my drill on something. It's all right, Mason. It's all right. Calm down, kid. Mary, the point I'm trying to make is that Bone Smell respects someone who, who doesn't just do things according to what they've been told. They gotta express their own free will. Why don't you take us down there and show us around, and then we'll put in a good word and say that, Mary, he makes his own decisions. I don't know. I feel like I'm supposed to make Lord Bone Smell's decisions exactly as he told them to me. I've gotta drill something. I can't take this anymore. Uh, but, okay, well, uh, I suppose maybe I can have you look around if I follow you. I don't think you're allowed to take pictures, so please don't take pictures. But Lord Bone Smell said I could have pictures. I got my hopes up for pictures. Okay, okay. All right, you can take a few photos, but I I'd really like if we ran them by Lord Bone Smell before Thank you leave. You. And let me just apologize for everything. You know, we run into a lot of guards who aren't very good at their jobs. But you've been really great at this, Mary. You should totally kill your boss and ascend the ranks. I, I guess I'm thinking about it now. Uh, anyway, please come with me and, and don't wander. I... Have to explain why you're down here. He leads you down the stairs into sort of a museum-looking area with a bunch of items on display. 
It's all really flashy, quite a lot of it looks foreign. He leads you to a pedestal where there's a gold scepter. The top looks like a parrot, and it's got red jewels in the eyes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here is the garnet parrot, a gift provided to our Lord Bonesmell from the Lord Bajiragard as thanks for being vanquished, and for having three generations of his family killed by Lord Bonesmell. Lord Bajiragard was subjected to three long months of grueling torture, during which he signed many confessions, admitting mostly that he deserved it, but he also at one point admitted that he was the reincarnation of William Shakespeare, and that he was the infamous D.B. Cooper. Oh, wow! Grab the rod off the pedestal. Oh, oh, uh, I read not all Chipper, about this in Evil Wizard to... Magazine. The, 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 the parrot, yeah. Take out my phone and get a picture of Paul with the rod. I was not aware there was an Evil Wizard Magazine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now that print is dead, we're bringing magazines back to life. It's like, uh, literature necromancy. Post the picture on Twitter. Hashtag Bone Smells Basement. Apply one of those stupid sparkle filters. Look on down the thing like it's a gun. So this here is the type of magical artifact that Bone Smell is keeping down here, right? Oh, that? Uh, no, sir. All of these are non-magical. These are just sentimental keepsakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. That does explain why this is here. Uh, you know, I was curious about that. Not magical at a glance. So he's got another room on the tour, right? Well, y you mean the ceremonial chambers? We're definitely not allowed in the ceremonial chambers. Mary... What did I tell you about thinking for yourself? You need to think for yourself. I I'm sorry, my lord. It's for safety's sake. You, you understand? These things kept in the ceremonial chambers, they go well beyond my understanding, sir. I couldn't possibly show you around there. Mary, have you ever even seen in the ceremonial chambers? Yeah, it could be full of candy. Well, I haven't, but knowing Lord Bonesmell, it's probably not full of candy. If you haven't looked, you don't know. Why would he keep candy in the ceremonial chamber? I always keep breath mints at the exit to my ceremonial chamber. See, but they would be evil enchanted breath mints, and that still sounds like it could be dangerous. It's probably where he keeps his gun cabinet, but he leaves it unlocked. I mean, does anyone seriously lock those things? My family never did. An unlocked gun cabinet would be dangerous too. Less magical, but still. Not if you leave the safety on the guns. That means the guns are safe, see? Alright, so my friends are throwing around hypotheticals, and again, crazy, from camera fumes. But as powerful wizards, we've seen it all. Yeah, like, I've seen breath mints that turn you into a lady, but they're also cursed so that they lower your credit score. Right. Thank you, Mason. Truly, the mind boggles at all the possibilities, but we've seen it all. All of it. So if you let us into the ceremonial chambers, there's nothing that's dangerous for us, or that we don't know how to handle. All the same, lords, I don't really have the authority to let you through the door. Well, who does if not you, Mary? That would probably be the doorkeeper, sir. Well, then take us to the doorkeeper. Let's not waste any more time. All right, I suppose right this way. Mary leads you guys into another room. There's no decorations here. There's just an austere wooden door. In front of it is a single guard with a German shepherd on a leash. He eyeballs you guys nervously as you come in and says, Yeah, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. All right, Mary, now's the time to show some spy. Go ahead and tell that guy that we'd like to tour the ceremony room. Mary goes, Okay. And he approaches the other guard who yells something in Swedish and the dog lunges at Mary. Ah! Ah! Oh, God! Whoa! Yeah, whoa! Oh, yeah. oh, no. The dog is just viciously yanking and tearing at Mary. What are you doing? Call off the dog! Are you crazy? It's another guard, you idiot! It's Mary! The guard yells another Swedish word and the dog stops. What? Well, why is he approaching me? Why did he approach me? No one's allowed down here! We were having a lovely tour until just now. Take a picture of this. Post it on Twitter. A tour? You can't be in the basement. The basement is forbidden. It's bingo night. Nothing is forbidden. Arguably, attacking someone with a dog is also kosher on bingo night, so you're in the clear, my dude. But it is pretty scummy. Yeah, dogs are like pure, kind animals. And you've used this one to maim another guard. Now this dog is going to hell and it's all your fault. What are you doing down here? He shouldn't have approached me. How was I supposed to know this was really Mary? Mary knows not to come down here. We had an orientation. There's no rules on bingo night. Mary can come down here if he wants to on bingo night. Mary's lying on the floor, groaning and bleeding. The door guard says... For all I knew, he was an evil wizard disguised as Mary. Or you were mind-controlling him or something. Yeah, well, that would be a whole lot more merciful of us than mauling him with a German shepherd, wouldn't it be? It's not about mercy. It's, it's about... I am guarding the you door. You killed... You, you murdered Mary, is what you did. For no reason. He was just going to talk to you. The guard gets on his radio. Yes, I've got three intruders at the entrance of the ceremony chambers. I need backup. Uh -oh. That's how you're going to spin the story. As intruders. A guy who works here and the people he was giving a tour to, invited by Mary, by the way. Here, let me go and try and get the radio off Mary. He's got one, right? 
He does, but as you approach, the guard yells, Don't step any closer! Uh, go for it anyway. What's he gonna do? Attack me with a dog? He yells the attack command. Try and yell the word he used to stop the dog. Uh, <laughs> alright. Give me a dice roll. Can you muster the authority and the accent in the heat of the moment to confuse the dog? All right. All right, the dog tenses up for a lunge, but with all the conviction of a man who doesn't know the danger he's really in, you shout the stop word and the dog stops. Grab the radio and pick it up. Yes, hello, this is the so-called intruders. I just like to get my side of the story in. We were just down here with our good friend Mary, enjoying the tour of the basement, and we walk in and this psychopath yells, Horty Vorty! Gesture dramatically at the guard while yelling the dog's attack word. <laughs> All right, give me another roll. I'm lucky tonight. The dog jumps on the other guard and the guy loses all composure. He's screaming and trying to shout the stop word, but he can't seem to muster the confidence to convince the dog. Ah! Ah! Go, 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 Mason, use your lockpicking skills. I go to open the door. You run up to the door and see that it's an electronic lock with a keypad. Oh, hmm. Gonna have to operate it with the drill. Come on, come on, Mason. They're gonna get backup coming. Uh, well, these things usually have like a factory reset. If they didn't change the administrator code or whatever, just turn it off. All right. Uh, you find the little reset pin, press it down, and type in 0000. zero, zero, zero. The keypad flashes green and the door unlocks. I use a tiny drill bit to push the reset pin. Master locksmith, expert driller. All right, go. Come on, come on, come on. Rush through the door. You guys rush into what appears to be a limestone cave. There's no lights, no flooring, no decoration whatsoever. It's a pitch black cave. Shut the door behind us. Is there another keypad? Yes. All right, change the password on the door, then change the admin password so it can't be reset. Don't worry, guys. They can't follow us now. Then drill through the keypad so it breaks. Ah! Oh. Ah. Uh. Well, I knew Boehner picked you guys for a reason. Assembled a perfect team with all the skills that we need. Yeah. My finger guns really scared the heck out of that guard from earlier. All right, all that's left is to move forward, then go back. But we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. So here we are in a cave. Yes, the cave in which we realize our destiny. It's dark. Just like the future, you can't really see it. It is indeed a dark cave. And you guys are down here with no way to see where you're going. Get out my phone and turn on my flashlight. Oh, yeah, I guess there is such a thing as modern convenience. Sure, okay, you guys are looking around, you see the cave is basically just an ordinary cave with no special markings or anything. And it branches off in several directions. All right, so... Uncle Boehner discussed this with me before the heist, and as he explained it, see, the... Uh, real danger of the ceremony room isn't the magic skull that breathes flames or anything. Uh, cause it doesn't exist. You know, that's what you'd expect, but it's not there. Is that what we'd expect? I wouldn't have come down here if I expected to get immolated by a magic skull. You wouldn't get immolated by robbing a thousand gas stations in one night. We still could have done my idea. Yeah, you would. The friction would burn you alive. The what? The friction. Because moving fast enough to rob a thousand gas stations in one night would produce, like, just terrible amounts of friction. Well, we'd use Santa magic. Well, we need the bones for Santa magic, and, and anyway... Uh, Boehner told us that the danger is not- we smeared ourselves in Vaseline? To what? Avoid air friction? Yeah, that would cut down on all the friction. Well, how would you hold on your gun? You'd be all lubed up with Vaseline. I don't have a gun, I just point my fingers at people, Paul. Fair enough, Lowry. Uh, okay, anyway, the clear, obvious danger of this ceremony room is that it's a cave system. So if we just start running around without knowing where we're going, we're gonna get lost and starve to death. Kind of ingenious, really. It's just inherently dangerous. So then what do we do now? Well, I've been through a lot of heists like this, and the answer is pretty obvious when you've got the experience. But Mason, just for the sake of the Socratic method, what might you expect would be the answer? Uh... Well, Lowry got a sharpie, and we could probably use that to mark the walls and have some idea of where we've been. That's dumb, Mason. That obviously can't be the plan. Because it's only sheer luck that I have the Sharpie. Larry is right. It would be profoundly stupid if we found ourselves in this cavern and the Sharpie was all we had to rely on. But in the spirit of serendipity and inspiration, I'd like to use your idea. No sense in discouraging independent thought, you know, that's what I always say. Oh, thanks. I like to be a part of things. Uh, so is the original plan better, or...? Yeah, don't worry, I'll, I'll debrief you on the original plan after the job, and we'll talk about the pros and the cons and everything, but for now, we just need to find ourselves those magic bones that are being kept here. I like the other room better. 
There was all kinds of valuable stuff in there. We could have just stolen that and been gone. Well, we got this golden rod of the parrot or whatever, and think about how much this is worth. It's literally its weight in gold. It's made of gold. It might just be gold-plated. No, it isn't. I read about it in Evil Wizards Monthly. Oh, is that real? I thought you made that up. Nah. Yeah, that's exactly my point. If that's solid gold, we're already rich. No, what is this? This is, this is like a vacation to Aruba? A single trip to the hospital? Gentlemen, in our line of work, we need enough money to make regular trips to the hospital. It's an injury-prone job. We can't make scratch like that with just a single rod of pure gold. If this amount of value was set before us, imagine how much value has got to be ahead of us. Well, we could sell that rod and buy a ton of scratchers tickets. We'd win the lottery and we'd get rich. I'm trying to explain to you that a set of magic bones is a revenue stream. Not a one-time winning, you know, like the lottery, okay, Lowry? But, Paul, I thought you said we were going to sell the bones. Mason, with the bones magic, we can sell the bones, then keep them at the same time. It wouldn't be magic if we didn't violate the laws of causality like that, you know? You get me? It's complicated, but you'll figure it out. Oh, I guess I didn't think about selling the bones and keeping them, too. Uh, we'll lead on, Paul. Thank you, I am presently doing so. Elvis, I walk with all the confidence down a random cave corridor and hope that luck is with me. Mark our path with the sharpie along the way. You guys wander through the caves for a while, and you don't get very deep in before you start to hear a voice singing. It sounds like an elderly woman. I don't suppose the bones sing, do they? Bones don't sing, Mason. Obviously that's a siren trying to lure us to our deaths. It's not a siren. Actually, Elvis, are we attracted to the voice? No. It's not a siren. If it were a siren, for one thing, it would live in the ocean. They're aquatic mammals. And what are you, an expert on sirens? It sounds old. It's an old siren, so its powers just aren't as strong as they used to be. What if it is the bones? What if the bones are inside a person and the person is singing? But that- because then it wouldn't be a heist, it would be a kidnapping. But what a twist, though. We get to the end of all this and find out the magic is literally inside us all along. This is not a fairy tale. What do you think this is? I, Uncle Boehner wouldn't have called it a heist if the magic was inside somebody. Okay, he would have called it a murder or a kidnapping. The bones are not going to be in someone. I'm just saying it'd be super clever. Well, how many times is life poetic like that, huh? Never. Well, I bet the wizards make it poetic all the time. No, no. I mean, that's what you'd think, right? But poetry is expensive. Do you know the going rate for a professional poetry these days? I assume it's pretty cheap. No, you're thinking of run-of-the-mill poetry. You know, like uh, something from out of the college dorm rooms. I'm talking about magically potent that, poetry. That implies that there is magical poetry. No, no, is... nobody pays for magical poetry. See, and it's a supply and demand thing. Nobody demands it, so nobody makes it, and, and so there's a scarcity. And prices are through the roof. It's basic economics. There's no magical poetry. It's like claymation or handcrafted... Bagels. The cost is unsustainable compared to all the alternatives. It's, it's, it could still be an elderly siren. All right, you know what? We're just going to go check it out. We're going to go right to it, and you're going to see it. It's not a magical poetry club, and it's not a nautical predatory mammal woman. Okay? Elvis, I march without stealth or heed directly towards the singing voice. Keep marking our path with the sharpie. You follow the voice until you arrive at a sort of alcove in the caves. It's about the size of a bedroom. Inside, there's a spectral figure of an old woman who appears to be cooking something over an empty space. There's no stove or anything, but she's clearly stirring a pot and preparing ingredients. There's a bit of ratty old furniture as well, including a beaten up dresser and a dirty mattress. There's a desiccated corpse laying on the mattress. The spectral woman looks up at you guys, smiles, and says, Oh, it's about time you visited, dears. I was worried you wouldn't make it. I'm almost done with a fresh batch of cookies. Oh, uh, pardon us, ma'am. We were actually looking for Lord Bonesmell's bones. But we just wanted to check. You've never composed poetry, have you? I don't know a Lord Bonesmell. And no, I've never been one much for poetry. It's too tricky making things rhyme. That's the devil's language there. Jesus wouldn't approve. Right, and just to double check, you've never feasted on the flesh of a sailor, have you? Heavens no, Jesus wouldn't approve of that either. All right, that's what I thought. See, gentlemen, just a God-fearing spectral lady. Let's move along. Well, hang on. How do we know the bones aren't in that corpse? Mason, they're not going to be in that corpse. We should still check, just in case. And how exactly are you going to check? Would you have, like, a magic thermometer that checks the magic of bones? Oh, come now. Don't fight with each other. I've made enough cookies for everyone. Not now, Grandma. Please. We're having a discussion. Mason, listen to me. Do you think this is how the legendary bones of Lord Bonesmell would be presented? They're not even on a pedestal or anything. Paul, as you're standing there fighting, you can actually smell the cookies. And really, they smell kind of amazing. If you were Lord Bonesmell, wouldn't you hide the bones? You wouldn't put them somewhere obvious. The ones on the pedestal are going to be decoy bones. Decoy bones? 
You know how expensive decoy bones would be? I mean, you gotta like engrave stuff in gold. It's ridiculous. Hey, Grandma, what exactly kind of cookies are you making? Oh, your favorite, of course. I know my grandson like the back of my paw. Right, of course, my favorite. Uh, where was I? Oh, right, right. Imagine the cost of taking bones out of a person, blessing them with magical power, and then putting them back in the corpse. It's ridiculous. Who would do that? You're ridiculous. I would do it to hide the bones. Yeah, firm comeback. Just reiterate what you've already said. Well, I'm just totally convinced now. At this point, the smell of cookies is absolutely mouthwatering. What's more, if you look in the room kind of out of one eye, you can sort of see the stove. The whole room looks kind of comfy, like a bright springtime day. We should run away. What? From homemade cookies? From the evil siren trying to lure us to our death. She's not an evil siren. I just asked her. Never feasted on a sailor in her life. Jesus wouldn't approve. She's gonna kill us. You can't trust Grandma. She drinks too much. Well, evidently it runs in the family because I don't see a wicked siren. I see a kind old woman baking cookies for us. Delicious smelling ones, by the way, ma'am. My compliments to you. Thank you, dear. Won't you come on in? There to die for. Okay, see? See? I mean, if that is not a red flag. Like, really? Like, to die for? You die for these cookies? At this point, the spectral old woman appears to be flesh and blood. She looks like each of your individual grandmothers. Kind of an indistinct blend of both sides of the family, and you're no longer in a cave. You're standing outside the kitchen. Grandma, you're telling me these cookies are so good. People are actually willing to lay down their lives for them? That's right, my sweet dear grandchild. They certainly do. Well, that... Gentlemen, I don't I don't know if you can smell these things, but do you really want to say you broke into the evil Lord Bonesmell's house and passed up on the opportunity to try world-ending cookies? I walk in the kitchen. Uh, oh, but she... Uh, okay, you don't know what she puts in the cookies. Don't have more than one. I follow Paul. Uh, guys? Both my grandmas died when I was a little kid, so this seems a little weird. Don't be silly, sweetheart. I didn't die. You come to visit me by my lakeside home every spring, remember? Uh, y yeah, I guess I do. That's right, of course you do. Now you just sit down. These are almost ready. Thanks, Grandma. Hey, uh, you know, I know you're probably wondering, you know, once again, where's Elaine? The grandkids have got to be like six or seven years old by now, and they never come by. It's the same thing every time, you know, Elaine, she's just, you know. I do wonder that. That Elaine. I just can't argue with her. You know, we're on the rocks again. Money troubles, like usual. Oh, sweetheart, again? Well, not to worry, I can make all those troubles go away. I, yeah, I know you can, Grandma. I mean, I, I really hate to ask for money. I mean, I just can't do that to you. But, uh, Elaine's catering business, it's not holding up, and I'm still waiting for partner at my law firm. You know, but can you believe it? They passed me up in favor of the boss's son. Nepotism. Paul, gra my grandma doesn't have any money. Well, yours doesn't, Lowry, but mine does. All right. Rude. A little rude to brag about that in front of my grandma. What the heck are you talking about? Is this your grandma? This is my grandma. Are we related? Elvis, I start looking for grandma's checkbook. All right, you start looking around the kitchen at stuff. Eventually, you rummage through some of the dresser drawers in the dresser that's there for some reason, and you find that one of the drawers is locked. Uh, so, about that money, Grandma, which I'm obviously not going to ask you for, but, you know, I don't suppose, like... What if I did ask? Would it be a huge imposition? Oh, oh, don't you worry about money. You're welcome to stay with Grandma if things get tough. Why not let it all blow over here for a few days? I'll take care of you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I might, I might take you up on that. Hey, Mason, come over here for a second. Hey, Paul. Um, you don't think there's something, like, really weird about this whole situation, do you? Yeah, I do, actually. Uh, you know, my grandma doesn't usually evade the subject of money this much. You think she's short on cash? Is this your grandma? Yeah, it's my grandma. Oh, uh, right, sorry. Uh, grandma, I forgot to introduce you to my friend. This is Mason, and that over there is Lowry. These are business friends of mine. Kinda, you know. They were wrapped up in parking tickets all up to their eyeballs, and I got them off. Oh, that's my grandma. Mason, you can't just go around saying every old person is your grandma. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that's my grandma. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Graham Graham. Uh, Mason's a funny kind of guy. You know, uh, it's, it's why we're friends, Mason. And the stress of the parking tickets really kind of did a number on Hey! Mason, I don't suppose you could, you know, like, lockpick that drawer, could you? You want me to break into Grandma's stuff? Listen, my Grandma, she gets a little funny in the head sometimes. You know, she locks up important stuff, like her car keys or her underwear. <laughs> Boy, that, that's a whole story. You know, I could tell you. Just, uh, hey, give it the old bzz, bzz. Okay, but, but that's, that's my Grandma. All right, fine, whatever. It's, it's your Grandma. Just open this drawer, okay? I need you to get open that drawer. Okay. 
Elvis, I drill open the lock on the drawer. Grandma turns around and looks genuinely upset. What are you doing there? That dresser isn't to be opened. Oh, he's he's not opening it, Grandma. That's her weed drawer, Paul. We're not he's, supposed to get into shut it. Shut up, Lowry. He's not opening it. We just found one of the drawers is loose, and we're fastening a hinge, okay? The drawer pops open, and inside is a beating heart. Uh... Stay away from that! This isn't weed. Nor is it a checkbook. Yeah, it's also not underwear. It's, it's Grandma's heart! You mustn't touch it. Pick it up and hold it out so Grandma can see it. This is your heart? Put it down, dear. Please, I beg of you. Grandma, is this your heart? Yes, it's Grandma's heart. Uh, put it away. I cannot live without it. Oh, man, I always knew this was going to happen. I had dreams like this. Grandma, have you seen a doctor about this? This is a heart. This, this can't be outside your body. Exactly. Yes, yes, you have to keep it safe. You have to keep Grandma safe. I understand that, Grandma, but this is, this is supposed to be inside you. It doesn't work right outside of your body. Paul, maybe you ought to put Grandma's heart back. All right, back up, Mason. I'm talking about putting it back. Graham Graham, is this another one of your holistic medicine things? Uh, please, dear, I'll do whatever you want if you put the heart back. Hey, please, your cookies are almost done. You have to see a doctor. A real doctor. Your friend Constantina is not a doctor, okay? Did she tell you that this was a good idea? Please, please calm down, this sweetheart. Is your I, I just blood want you to pressure, put the heart away. This is your blood pressure medicine debacle all over again. Constantina doesn't know Jack. The doctor said you have to take real medicine, Grandma. Oh. You gotta put Grandma's heart back in the drawer. That's Grandma's get heart. Get away from me. This is over the line. I can't... Try and take the heart from Paul. Get... get you get away. Get away from me. You crackpots. You're trying to kill her. Give me the heart, Paul. It's Grandma's uh, choice. I just want a normal Grandma. Shove Mason away and run towards the exit. No! You can't have this. We gotta see a real doctor. We gotta... Get, in fact, I gotta get you to urgent care right now. Is this how Constantina said to treat your blood pressure? This is not a good way to treat blood pressure. I mean, it, please, it probably please works, but it, it can't be healthy. Can't live Give it back, it Paul. Grandma needs her heart. No. Run. Ah, uh, dang it. Chase Paul. Guys, don't leave me. Grandma throws things when she gets mad. So you guys just like run off into the caves? Yep, as fast as I can run. Pull out my phone for light, and then don't even keep track of where I'm going. Just chase Paul's light. Do my best not to lose him. You guys run, and you run, and you run, with no heed for where you are, nor where you're going. Paul, at some point you come to a space where you're gonna have to crawl through a narrow opening to keep on. Do it, crawl through the hole. Follow me now, suckers! Paul climbs through a dangerous hole. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Paul, you can't do that. You're gonna get stuck in a hole. Cave Spolinkers die like this sometimes. Gotta take risks to keep ahead, Mason! Oh, uh, oh, oh man. Alright. Climb in the hole after Paul. The audacity, Paul, they follow you through the hole. It's a tight squeeze, but you come out in a different section of the cave. Keep going, I'm gonna lose these chumps. Don't let him stay on his heels. Paul almost slips away, but luckily you can chase the light in the darkness. Paul, eventually the memory of Grandma begins to fade, and you realize you're running through a dark cave holding the still-beating heart of a spectral old woman that you don't really know. Slow down to a stop, and have a look at this heart that I've got. It is still beating, it's warm, and it's gross. Turn the corner and run into Paul. Ugh! Drop the heart. Splash! It falls in a puddle. Ah, uh, heck. Oops. Uh, sorry. Oh, things got crazy there. <laughs> well, uh, uh, my grandma's dead. Are we cool? Are we cool? I mean, I... Yeah, yeah, we're cool. I mean, everything, everything continues to go exactly, exactly as planned. She was a siren, I told you. She was not a siren! The typical layman, uh... Fish around in the water for the heart. You find it. It's not beating anymore. You don't understand. Look, a siren is a sea-based amphibious mammal that also has some resemblance overlap with the bird. They sing and they draw psychic control over your brain. That is exactly what she did, Okay, Paul. but that's not the same as being a siren. A siren is... Like, okay, you know how a tiger and a lion are both big cats, but one's a solitary predator and the other Henson packs in the Serengeti? Well, not every single singing predatory woman is a siren. That woman was just part of the same genus. She didn't have a genus. She was a lady, stupid. All right, you listen to me, you, you illiterate hack brain. A genus is the scientific classification that separates a lion from a tiger. It's the difference between a man and a chimp. And in this case, that woman was not amphibious. Ergo, she's not a siren. Well, then what do you call a singing woman that lives in a cave? Well, Lowry, when they live in a cave, they're part of the arachnid family. And you call them draglers. Draglers? Yes, draglers. I've never heard of a draggler. Well, you wouldn't have. You've never even heard of a book. I so have heard of books. They're called books on tape. You wouldn't know a genus if it slapped you in the face. 
If you're still calling them books on tape, it shows the last time you ever listened to one. When was it, the 90s? I'll slap your genus. I'll slap your genus straight to the hospital. That's what I'm going to do. All right. All right. Guys. Guys. Uh, okay, so we just had a brush with death with, like, a weird psychic grandma. And I think tensions are a little high. But we're in an unfamiliar cave system, and now we're really deep inside it, and I'm trying not to freak, but, you know, <laughs> people die like this. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Calm down, Mason. No, he's right. We're gonna die. We're not gonna die. Okay, listen, listen. What we have now is the heart of a draggler, which, which is important, right? It's part of the plan. It's a powerful magical artifact unto itself, and so it's good that we've obtained it, see? We, we were looking for this? Yeah, of course. I, I wouldn't walk towards the song of a draggler if it wasn't for valid and well-informed reasons. Uh, now, I lick my finger and stick it in the air. You don't feel a breeze or anything? Ah, perfect. All right, I still got our bearings. We, we gotta go this way. March determinedly off in a random direction. Slash, slash, tromp, tromp, tromp. You guys continue down the caves, not really sure what's ahead or behind. Luckily, before you can give in to despair and start to think you'll never make it out, there's torch lights in the distance. You see? I told you, right on schedule, exactly as Uncle Boehner planned. Why, what's up ahead? Well, just be quiet, and you'll see for yourself. It's really pretty amazing, so, you know, I don't want to spoil it. It turns out it's a large set of brass doors with all kinds of jagged and complicated decorations on it. On either side, there's two open tubes. Ah, oh, this. Okay, this. See... For one thing, look at that craftsmanship. I'd say probably Tim Orwellian, 1945. Well-regarded maker of magical doors. Best in the business in his time. You know, it would take the average of 20 men and one-half people to construct one of these babies over the span of a year. Yes, sir. What are the tubes for? Ah, the tubes, yeah. Uh, shine a light down the tube. It looks like there's some kind of complex mechanism inside. You have no idea what it is, and there's like a switch at the far end. Well, the answer is obvious on, uh, you know, familiarity. This, this is where we need to put the draggler heart. Watch, I'm going to activate the door. Put the heart in one of the tubes and then just kind of stuff it on down there with the gold rod that I stole. There's a violent clacking noise and then a bunch of blades sling out and catch on the rod. <laughs> I mean, aha, aha, yeah, see? Uh, you never want to activate these with your bare hands. Very dangerous if I had stuffed that down there with just my hand. Uh, yank the rod as hard as I can. It's a bit of a struggle, and you're really fighting the machine, but you pull out a scratched and torn up rod. Turns out it was just gold-plated, the rod itself was carbon steel. Hey. What? You said the rod was pure gold. Did I? I mean, yeah, uh, well, it's, uh, I don't suppose you've ever seen pure white gold. They make different types of gold? Yeah, of course they do. I mean, there's rose gold, white gold, you know, then your standard gold, which of course this has been electroplated with. In some rare cases, you might run into the exceedingly rare amber gold, which is sort of a reddish hue. You know, you don't see that very often at the jewelers, because except for when it's made synthetically, it's very rare. Your typical white gold is more vulnerable to tarnish, so sometimes you do a standard gold plating to protect it from wear and tear. Uh, uh -huh, and uh, most people aren't aware, you know, but my mother was a jeweler, so you, you pick these things up from the trade. Well, Paul, all that aside, the door is still closed. An astute and very valid observation, Mason. But look at the situation. We got two tubes and only one heart. We placed the heart we acquired here in this left tube, but we need the next artifact of power to put in the right-hand side. Oh. So it's like a video game. Yeah, this kind of cliche is all too common in these sorts of magic get-ups. You know, wizards just can't help themselves. So there's another one, then? Yeah, and I know exactly where to find it. Follow me. I head in a random direction once again. Away you go. You know, a lot of games involve these kind of cave dungeons, but they're always really linear. You never just vanish down the wrong hole and get lost forever. Mason, it's hard to describe an exciting scenario where everything's dark and it looks the same and then you starve to death. Well, Paul, when you get into the abstract, in a D&D game, you set up a little battle mat, you draw out all the cave rooms, but there's no reason not to tell the players that they wander aimlessly through cave corridors from which they'll never return, only to be attacked by the skeletons of other adventurers that also never returned. I'm pretty sure that currently you can just take a D&D class that gets to survive in their ideal terrain. Most players choose woodlands or mountains, but realistically cave systems are where the party's always at. See, but Lowry, I'm saying the GM never kills anyone for getting lost in a cave. And maybe he should. Well, I'm not about to. I haven't planned that out. I don't know how to make that work. So anyway, you guys wander aimlessly in a cave system for another 15 minutes or so until you see a light in the distance. You also hear the sound of some elevator music. 
All right, before we walk directly towards what is obviously a danger to us, I just want to ask, is this another type of siren? First of all, Lowry, I don't know how many times I have to explain that what you saw was not a siren, but rather a cave variant called a draggler. Paul, is it going to lure us in with the haunting melody of elevator music and then eat our flesh or will it not? Look, what I do know is that it would be beyond stupid for them to have two mind-controlling trials one after the next, because we'd already be prepared for the second one. As far as we know, that could be the sound of the employee break room where the necromancers hang out during lunch. Did your Uncle Boehner mention the employee break room? I believe he did say something about that, yes, every facility has one. I mean, I don't recall, the details are foggy. Well, we should probably avoid the employee break room anyway. I mean, the employees are going to be there. Unless they're not, in which case we should go and steal their lunch. Well, if they're specifically on break, they can't do anything to hurt us, because they're off the clock. It's illegal. But it's bingo night. There are no laws. Well, I don't think federal law respects bingo night, and it would still be a lawsuit. Federal law also doesn't respect blood sport, which is what Bingo Night is, but here we are. Look, Larry, I didn't say for sure that it's the employee break room. Just that for all we know it could be, and it's obviously not a trap to lure us to our dooms, because they already tried that once, and why would you have a bunch of traps to lure you to your doom in a place where you do whatever it is they do in here? Bone smell would look like a complete rube. Well, if I ran a dangerous underground trap dungeon, every single doorknob would be an explosive. So every time you tried to go through the door... It'd explode. Everyone would get wise to that after the second time. Well, then I'd make the third doorknob explode if you don't turn it. Plus, come on, how's someone going to survive an exploding doorknob twice? Larry, they're not doing the same traps twice, okay? But you're implying they'd fall for it the second time, at least. And insisting they wouldn't do it twice is exactly what you say before the second doorknob explodes, Paul. My dungeon would kill you. All right, fine. Well, you know what? Mind control or not, you know, I, I, whatever. I have confidence in my own abilities. Elvis, I march directly towards the music. You turn the corridor, and surprisingly, find yourself shining your lights on the exterior of a shop. The word sale is printed in bold letters on dusty windows. Over the door, it says, Marty's Mattresses. See? You see? It's not a siren. R a draggler. It's a mattress store. Thank you. Probably an exploding mattress store. Why would it explode? That'd be terrible for mattresses. Because you don't expect them to, and they're cursed mattresses. You see, oh, it's a mattress store. And then you walk in, and boom, the whole mattress store explodes. They couldn't sell a single mattress that way. They don't sell mattresses. It's a bomb. So you're saying they would go through the trouble of making a mattress store just to have it be a bomb? You I don't mean, think how it's does a that... bomb because it would be very stupid if it was a bomb. Those are the kind of ideas that always work because they're too stupid to think of. Uh, okay, okay, okay. If that were true, I can think of a number of schemes that... Look, okay, look, look, it's just not... It doesn't work. Most of the time, all right? The dumbest schemes are the easiest to figure out for most people. It's not a bomb. We would see the wires. The wires are inside the store. Well, wouldn't it be stupider to put them outside? Then we'd see the wires and say, oh, this is a bomb. No, that's too stupid because then you know it's a bomb. You don't know how to do good stupid. Well, where's it's the like... line between stupid and too stupid? Because the too stupider is, you get, it, it seems it is, better. It is probably a trap, though. Well, what is the point? If everyone thinks it's a trap, then no one goes in. Right, and then you second-guess yourself, and then you do go in, and, and you die. No, genius. Obviously, the key is to go through that door, because that's that's where they're hiding everything, because they want you to think it's a bomb, so they hit everything inside of there. If they hit everything inside of there, it'd look like a pit of lava or something really dangerous. Well, the draggler didn't look dangerous. She looked like a kind old lady, and yet and we needed her heart and stuff. Actually, she was a spooky ghost. That was, like, a huge red well, flag. Well, if you knew your dragglers, you'd know that that was, like, a less terrifying variant. The dragglers usually have giant she teeth. She enchants you with your song. She said her cookies were to die that, I mean, for. this is, that was, uh, it was a discount draggler. Like, if you've seen the dragglers available on the markets, they make them, they make them much bigger than that one. So are we going in the store? Or? Well, I don't know. We're running a risk that maybe there's if a draggler heart in there. If you can buy draggler's on then... the store, if you can go to a... How come we don't just buy draggler hearts? We, because You can't because it's against the terms of service for most of the online retailers. And besides, it would take at least a day to get to us, you know? If you knew we it's... needed draggler hearts, why didn't you just bring your own? Be because I wasn't the designated draggler heart guy. Uncle Bader... Well, he's supposed to bring him in his car, and he, for well, he forgot. Well, the okay? mattress store is definitely a bomb, so if you go in there, you're gonna die. It's not a bomb. There's there's probably another draggler in there. It's obviously a bomb, and you just said they wouldn't do the draggler thing twice. It's not a bomb, and there's no dragglers in there. It's, a, it's They're selling mattresses. Open the door. Ding, ding. You're greeted by a crystal clear shop bell. It resonates in the air with the grace of a pure Christmas morning. 
Then, out from the shadows, emerges a large, hunched-over figure. You shine your light on it and see the face of a bald man, but the head is attached to the body of a large bull. Oh, customers? Is it customers? Oh, I haven't had customers in, uh... I don't know if I've ever had customers. Uh, 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 do come in. I haven't cared much for the place, but the, the mattresses are still good. In that they are recognizable as mattresses after all this time. Please, please come in. Huh. Well, you see, they're selling mattresses. Get down, he's going to explode. He's not going to explode, except for with fantastic prices, right? You're not going to explode, sir. Am I to guess that you're Mr. Marty? What? Who's Marty? My, my name is Peter. Oh, well, it says Marty's mattress is on the storefront. Well, I've never seen the front of the store. M my, my name is Peter, but welcome to Marty's mattresses, I suppose. He gestures a hoof towards an ancient mattress sitting on a display bed. We have a special today... Uh, b b buy one mattress, uh, release me from my uh, eternal torment. Best deals in town. He never answered whether he was going to explode. He still could. I'm going to explode. If this man's going to explode, would you please just let him explode for himself? There's no reason to constantly pressure the guy. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to explode. Paul, don't you ever take joy from predicting things before they happen? Not when the prediction is that the person I'm having a nice conversation with is going to spontaneously blow up like a bomb, Lowry. Come on, it'd be worth a laugh 20 years down the road after getting a lot of therapy. I'm not going to explode, but I will sell you a mattress. Buy one, get the whole, all the rest of the mattresses, actually, in fact, because I'll be freed from my curse and, and you can just, Excuse you can just me, take sir. them. I don't mean to be rude, but I gotta get something off my chest. Larry, why is it that you gotta act like you know everything that's going on? You know, why do you gotta be some kind of supernatural expert or something, huh? Oh, you make fun of me now, but you wouldn't if that guy had exploded. Well, a broken clock is right twice a day. Ex except when it's about explosions, because that would be very bad if you had a bomb go off twice a day. But I'm here laughing every other second of every other minute. Yeah, but whenever I'm correct, there's an explosion and everyone remembers. Yeah, he's got you there. You only have to be right about an explosion one time. And then, you know, everyone really does okay, remember. Okay, all right, don't you start. I mean, unless it's like a little tiny explosion, like a firework. Are you suggesting that this man here is about to burst, but in like a harmless fun way, like a firecracker? Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying if he did, then uh, like he could explode several times and it wouldn't matter. L listen, I, I already said I'm, I'm not going to explode. Well, if you could, sir, I wouldn't mind. It would help me win my argument and make Paul look stupid. I'm, I'm not going to explode. The only thing I'm uh, b bursting with is amazing deals on fantastic uh, old um, a mattress. I well, we're I, actually I'm not looking for mattresses. Well, please, I, I don't know how long I've been d down here. I'll do anything you want. Just buy a uh, mattress, well, Marty. How much for a mattress? If you explode, I'll buy a mattress. Well, uh, one mattress costs your um, eternal soul. It it costs what? Well, you you just have to agree to some. Uh, some paperwork uh, that I have, and uh, wherein you forfeit your soul. All right, you keep saying that last part really fast and really quiet, and uh, I'm having a really hard time. Uh, what you're doing is illegal, I think. Yeah, e your your eternal soul. You have to give up your eternal soul for a mattress. These better be some dang good mattresses. Oh yeah, they're they're as good as they make them. Back when they made these. You mind if I try one out, you know? Like, there's no surcharge for that or anything, is there? Wait, don't lay down on the mattress. Why? Because it's gonna explode? I mean, obviously. Lowry keeps saying it's gotta happen now. No, it's gonna be so comfortable you're never gonna get up. They, well, they're, they're not... They're really not that comfortable. So these aren't even, like, magical sleep forever and die mattresses. They just... <laughs> like, you just well, give I, up your soul for these. I, and... Yes, it's, it's a very, very old mattress, and the springs will dig into your body. I'm gonna be honest, Marty. This... These kind of suck. My name is Peter, ac actually, and uh, that, that's okay. Maybe you can try another one. Uh, this this one's a California King, but I've got another Cal California King over here. It's a different color, and these, these are all California Kings. In fact, I admit they're all the same mattress, but there's one chance uh, some, some, some probably yeah, have aged yeah, better okay, than the uh, others. We're really looking more for, like, magic hearts to put in a big old set of doors some ways back. You mean the doors to the inner chamber? Yeah, those are them. Those are the ones. Oh, oh there's no way back there unless you uh, buy something. Why would you say that? Well, just go ahead and uh, try try to leave. All right, I try to leave. 
You touch the door to leave, and the shop bell emits a loud, low-pitched dong, which sends vibrations up and down your legs. All three of you lose feeling from the waist down and collapse. Oh, oh, oh what it's is like my this? legs fell asleep. Oh, your Uncle Boehner didn't tell you about the cursed mattress shop? Well, I'm sorry, Glowry, but apparently he doesn't know everything. Lord uh, Bone Smell says it's rude to enter a shop and not to uh, buy anything. So once you come in, you can't leave unless you uh, buy a mattress. That's not a sale, Marty. That's a robbery. That's not a robbery. This is. All this, I get back up on my feet. You're still a little wobbly, but you stand up. Hold out my fingers. Give me all the money in the register, or I'll shoot. I I don't have a register, exactly. Well, do you have any money at all? No. Well, then, I've taken everything that you have, and as such a transaction has occurred, I run for the door. Dong! Once again, the bell sounds its terrible toll, and you collapse into jelly. Oh, God! Stop doing that! Well, I didn't see you doing anything. That's because I'm laying here trying to massage some life back into my legs. I'm uh, I'm afraid there's no way around it. You'll have to uh, buy a mattress from me. But they're not even good mattresses. What if you sold us a mattress? That's exactly what I'm trying oh, to sorry, do. Oh, sorry, I got that backwards. What if we sell you a mattress? Oh, uh, I, no. I mean, I don't know if that would let you out, but... I don't want to do that, because then I wouldn't have a, a soul. Well, how's it all work? Like, could I just buy something else but not pay with my soul? I, I don't know Ex- exactly. Lord Bonesmell put me uh, here, and he said, sell a mattress, and you can go free. But you never sold a mattress before. Not yet. <laughs> uh, if I had, I would be um, I, free. Wait, so we don't even have a guarantee that we would get out of here if we bought a mattress. Nothing but... Um, Lord Bone Smell's devious word, I guess. Uh, that is, I think, what he said. Now that I think about it, it has, it has been a long time. Maybe he comes to see me after, after you buy the mattress. Man, this all would have been a lot faster if you just exploded. Oh, believe me, I know. Uh, nobody ever comes to uh, feed me or give me water, so occasionally I just die a slow... A painful death, and then wake up here again to wait for more customers who never arrive. Uh, I guess there's time to wait and see if the same thing happens to uh, you, or or you could buy uh, a mattress and then and see yeah. how if that works. Or uh, what if we unscrew that bell from the wall? Unscrew the bell? Yeah, I mean that's what's paralyzing us, isn't it? I don't know if you can. Do Mason, that. you got a drill. I mean, why not climb up there and give it a shot? Yeah, sure. I'll drag one of the beds over, stand on it, carefully hold the bell so it doesn't ring, and then unscrew it from the wall. Sure, it turns out it's not that difficult. You unscrew the bell from the wall above the door, and now you have a bell. Can I get something to stuff inside it, like a bit of cloth or some cotton? Peter says, I suppose I have a few uh, pillows lying around for the display. Great. I tear one open with the drill and stuff some cotton in the bell. I open the door. Mason, you can feel the bell trying to ring while it's sitting there in your hand, but it's stuffed with fluff, so the door opens, nothing happens, and you guys can leave. See, Marty? All it takes is a little bit of know-how and a little bit of a power drill. I don't know what power is stored in your, uh, drill, but I'm thankful that such wizards would take the time to free me from my, uh, eternal torment. Yeah, I mean, getting out without a hitch is better than trading our souls for a mattress. Honestly, I might not spend 40 bucks on one of these. I should hope not, sir. That's practically um, a fortune. Yeah. Uh, how long you been down here, Marty? My name is Peter, sir, and I couldn't say for sure, um, but I was banished for failing to wake the Lord Bone Smell one morning due to sleeping past my own uh, alarm. He said it would be fitting that I sell uh, mattresses to reflect the true value of a, a comfortable sleep. Why the body of a cow? It's creepy. You're creepy. As I understand, the Lord Bone Smell was... Um, experimenting with body swapping and, and declared he wanted to make me a, a, a taro min, like a reverse minotaur, you see. Uh, it's not an I- ironic thing, it's just something that he um, did, and who, who was I to stand up to him? Well, I guess if you had thumbs, you could have fixed that bell yourself. In hindsight, the Lord Bone Smell may have been um, thinking ahead, but he's also known to do these things simply because he finds it uh, uh, funny. 
It is pretty funny. You're like a big fat guy. I was never given a, a mirror. Does it look bad? I always imagined it, it looked bad. Uh, I've seen worse. Well, I wouldn't go to the beach looking like you, but that doesn't stop most people in Florida. You'll probably be fine. Yeah, 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 don't get yourself down. You know, if you get that in your head, you're gonna fail before you begin. Anyway, let's go ahead and shove this bell in the door so the door can absorb the magic powers. You guys start going back the way you came, and Peter follows behind you. What are you doing, Peter? Oh, uh, am I not, uh, coming with you? You're a gross cow man, and I hate your stutter. I thought I'd made that pretty clear. All right, come on, come on. There's nothing wrong with Marty here. He has an annoying stutter. It's awful. I suppose I could uh, work on it. I don't think I had a, a stutter yeah, before sure. I so came down here. Larry, how would you feel if you had a cow's body and I mean, a couple of guys were the first three people you'd met in a long time? I feel like a hamburger with a speech impediment. Yeah, but a sad hamburger, right? Hamburgers can't be sad. Yeah, hamburgers don't have feelings. Unless you put onions on them. Then they cry. All right, all right, see, you make comments like this and then you put other people down. You know, I want Marty to come with us just so I have someone else to talk to. Marty, you do feel sad and pathetic, right? Like a sad hamburger? I've had a lot of time to uh, cope with my face, See, sir. Peter has had a lot of time to think. He's a thinker, unlike the two of you. I've had a lot of thoughts, sir. Uh, for example, if a drawing ever came to life, do you think that it could see in all three dimensions, or would it only be constrained? I have By no idea, tilt. Peter. Wow, it's very philosophical. No way, because its brain would only be 2D, so it couldn't see anything because it would be dead. That's dumb. Drawings are still three-dimensional objects. They're just on a thin piece of paper. Yes, I thought of that, but what if it was actually a truly two-dimensional uh, character? Yeah, see? I mean, that can't live because your brain needs all three dimensions to live. I mean, you just have like a small slice of brain otherwise. You don't know anything, Mason. You never made a drawing come to life. It doesn't matter. I've seen cartoons. They have to do cutaway to see inside the brain. That means they don't have a brain because they don't have multiple dimensions. What are uh, cartoons? You're all wrong. Like on a, a higher level, you're all wrong. Everyone is wrong. Come on, let's go to the door before this devolves any further. You don't know exactly where the door is, but Peter helps guide you to where you're going. Thanks, Marty. I'm glad that you still know where everything is in spite of being locked up for however long. Oh, yes, they uh, made us learn to navigate these caves uh, blindfolded. I, I don't know if you uh, noticed, but there's lighting. There's no lighting in here. And when they first built the place, um, it would have been expensive to burn candles uh, all throughout. So you could have gotten lost in spite of the uh, lanterns. It's all muscle memory now. Aren't all your muscles cow muscles, though? Yeah, all they should remember is grazing. Well, my brain didn't forget anyway, and I've never grazed in all my life. You arrive at the front of the door. All right, gentlemen, we needed two artifacts to open this door, and behold! I hold up the bell, then go to shove it into the other hole in the door. Uh, what exactly are you doing? We need to open the door, Marty! So this magical artifact will be consumed by the door, and then it will unlock and grant us passage. Ah, uh, well, that's not how the door, uh, Yes, works. it is. I assure it is, because my Uncle Boehner went over the plan extensively, and he assured me that the door opens by sacrificing magical artifacts to it. I don't know who your Uncle, uh, Boehner is, but listen, uh, to me, because it's- that's not how you open the door. You don't shove, uh, magical artifacts in there, you're going to break it. How do we know you're telling the truth? You're just on Lord Bonesmell's side. Yeah, that's true. You were trying to make us sell our souls before, Marty. Well, I, I guess that is true, in fairness. I'm, but I'm not lying about the door. You can't just shove things in it and it'll break, and then you'll never get in. Well, then how does it open, Peter? It requires a blood sacrifice. Oldest magic in the uh, book. Blood sacrifice? I mean, that's not very modern. Doors today usually work by sacrificing magical objects. You know, blood magic is, is a terrible security risk. Nobody does it anymore. Security risk? Like how? I mean, I'm not an expert in it. I mean, nobody's an expert in it anymore. And nobody does blood magic these days. That's how risky it is. Well, it should be relatively safe. The door can only be uh, opened by those who touched with the magic of Lord Bonesmell himself. That's quite secure by the uh, standards that I'm familiar with. Okay, no, see, you, you got the people element there. All right, suppose one of the servants gets an email saying they need to go open the door. Well, they just go down and they open the door. You know, people element's always the weakest link. I, I suppose I follow, but, uh, you see that, that, uh, hole there? You're supposed to put your whole arm in there, and then it shreds your arm to, uh, ribbons. No one's gonna do that because of something that came in the, uh, mail. 
You assume pretty highly of your employees, but it happens more often than you'd believe. Paul's right. A lot of companies today include safety warnings in the orientation about not putting your stuff into things that can kill you. People will totally do it. They totally will. Well, I, I would assume I wouldn't. Why not? I mean, why wouldn't you do this for this? We set you free after years of captivity, and this is how you repay us. I, I, uh... Yeah, I... Peter. You should try and be more of a team player. Put your arm in the hole. Lord Bonesmell probably forgot all about you. We're your only friends now, Peter. Besides, you'll just come right back to life. That's what you said, that you come back after starving to death? I, I guess I did say that. Uh, uh, nah, uh, 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 come on, guys. We can't pressure our new friend Peter to stick his bovine arm inside this stabby hole like this. Even if we would all like him a lot more and think he's super cool for doing it. I mean, we gotta think of Peter's health. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to think of my right. health. It's such a tremendous risk to your health. Well, awesome would also be pretty brave. And uh, we can't expect that kind of bravery from just everyone. All right, give me a persuasion roll. Well, I guess if it would make me cool and uh, brave. That's the spirit. That's great, I knew Peter. it. I knew That's this. Great. I love Stick your this guy. Arm in the hole, nerd. Peter steps up to the door, trembling. He raises a hoof to the hole, then quickly inserts it in. You hear the blades kick in. <laughs> Peter falls to the ground, now having one less limb, and he's rolling back and forth, groaning about it. Ah! Uh, oh, oh God! Oh God! Uh, more pain is coming! Oh no! The door lights up, and it swings open. The door slides open to reveal a massive underground lake. The water is dark and brackish, and there are strands of difficult-to-identify substances floating on the surface. The smell of rotting meat hangs in the air. In the center of the lake is a large yurt made of animal skins. It's on a little island, and it looks like the only way to reach it is across a narrow, natural bridge in front of you. The yurt is emanating purple, yellow, and green lights, which often mingle into a sort of sickly brownish color. All right, Paul. Is this what we're looking for? Is this where the bones are? Well, Mason, uh, Uncle Boehner didn't describe it in great detail, but something akin to this is what we're looking for, yeah? I mean, that looks like the place. That's where I'd put all the bombs, Paul. The yurt's too convenient. It's another trap. Larry, it's not convenient. I mean, look, look, look at this narrow bridge we have to cross. If you slip and fall, I guarantee that's like instant brain amoebas in that water. Brain amoebas? Yeah, amoebas are known to live in dirty lake water. They climb in your ears, lay their eggs, and then drive you insane when they hatch. And this, this is amoeba water if I've ever seen it. Paul, I don't want amoeba water. Neither do I, Mason. Nobody does. You know, hence the challenge before us, and why it's not a bomb. I mean, the rocks could be slippery. You guys are dumb. You can kill amoebas just by boiling the water. Are you proposing that we boil this entire underground lake before we cross? Maybe there's another artifact in the caves that does that? That boils the lake? Do you have any idea how much energy that would take? I mean, <laughs> clearly Lord Bonesmell can't afford that. I mean, he can't even afford guardrails on his bridges. Why would he go through the expense to make a magical lake boiling charm? Maybe the guardrails are being renovated. Well, he should put up a sign that says, you know, mind your step or something. Jeez, I mean, this is dangerous. Yeah, but the Soul Eating Mattress Store was kind of dangerous too. Sure, but Bonesmell doesn't go in there. You know, all right, presumably he walks across this bridge. No guardrails, you're just asking for an accident eventually. See, Paul, this is how you know it's a trap. You think you have to walk across there, but there's nothing in that yurt. It's probably a bathroom or something. Look at all the gases coming out of it. That's, you, that's like, probably What would be the purpose of a bathroom with no guardrails to get to it? You, you still have the problem of no guardrails in that case. Now you have a bathroom, and you've got to pee and walk across this narrow, slippery bridge. I mean, the water's terrible. What, you just pee in the water at the edge of the lake. Or at a potted plant, I guess. I did do that. Yeah, see, but everyone else would have the dignity to pee in the water. Okay, look, we can't go back without at least checking this out. And I think I recall Boehner telling me something about, a, like, a precarious bridge. It's a religious rite. See, it's, it's symbolic of having trust in the bone smell system. All right, look, here I go, okay? Try and walk really carefully across this bridge. You get a little ways out, and a bunch of zombified hands rise up out of the lake and start trying to grasp at you. Run right back the way I came. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> did you guys see that? Oh, gross. Oh, that's super gross. When you get back to the shore, the hands slowly sink back into the water. Okay. Well, all right, all right. Uh, that's a... Uh, uh, 
Zombie hands. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they uh, in the business, they call those fairy hands. But yeah, that's basically what that is. So what do we do about it? Um, well, uh... Elvis, how fast did it look like those hands were coming out? Could I outrun them? They weren't very fast or very accurate. You probably could. Okay, so, uh, this is a familiar spell. All right, wizards sometimes cast it on bodies of water. They call it, uh, Mortenheimer's Fairy Hands of Slow Creeping Clamminess. They're, they're like, you, you know, you don't want them to touch you. Yeah, I'll bet. Find a big rock and chuck it in the water. You throw the rock and some hands kind of catch up and then get hit by the rock and sink back down. The surface ripples out and bubbles and then nothing stirs below. Mason, are you trying to provoke something to come up out of the lake and grab us? We thought maybe they'd react to movement. And I mean, they tried to catch the rock. Yeah, see, you'd, you'd think that they would react just to movement, but they don't, right? Because they're not very quick. I mean, they try, but they're not very quick. And see, if you just run across really fast, you can get to the other side before they grab you. Well, I'm not doing that. Yeah, no way. It's just a bathroom out there. I'm not running over that. Well, c- come on, fellas. I'll be right behind you. Well, we shouldn't do it like that. I mean, we should do it one at a time, because otherwise the hands are going to grab whoever's going last. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's a good point, I guess. All right, I'll go first. You should be the only one who goes. Just check to make sure that the bones are there. All right, all right. Lowry, because I'm such an amazing leader, I'm going to do that. All right, well, go. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm just, uh, just give me a chance to warm up, all right? I, mean, I don't want to get a Charlie horse halfway across the bridge, you know, understand? We've already been running around these caves all day. You should be it fine. It doesn't hurt to be a little more limber. You can go cold in like 30 minutes, okay? All right, fine, 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 fine. Elvis, I get myself ready at the start of this bridge, and as soon as I find the confidence, I run across as quickly as I think I can safely. You get down... Do a few stretches, take a few seconds, gather some confidence, then bolt across the bridge. The hands rise up behind you, but they're so slow they don't come anywhere near to catching you. Instead, they just make a slow-motion zombie wave behind you. Mason and Elvis, you don't see the hands ever get high enough to even reach the bridge. Are you okay? Did you get a Charlie horse? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh. Uh, it's just all in the timing. Warren Hyman's fairy hands, no big deal. Okay. Okay, go see if the bones are in the tent. Yeah, I'm gonna do that! You just stay right there, you cowards! Elvis, I go to the tent. As you approach, you hear chanting. It's low and rhythmic, and it doesn't sound like English. You pull aside the flap of the yurt and see three men standing around an altar with a bunch of bones sitting on top of it. The strange, sickly-colored lights are emanating from the bones. Each of the men has his eyes plucked out. Oh, uh, excuse me, fellas. I, uh, I'm late, you know, for this thing that we're doing. Uh, Sagua Sanfa... Uh, hey, let me tell the others. Hey, guys! Yeah, they got the bones set up. They're, they're already doing the ritual without us. What ritual? You know, the ritual that we're gonna do. They're still on Sagua San Fa, I think. Uh, so we can just join in. You know, c- come on, come help us out. Go back to the guys in the yurt and stand in their circle. Uh, all right, so where are we? Uh, we got, uh, four more guys coming in. Bone Smell wanted a seven-man deal. You know, it's biblically significant to commemorate bingo night. They just keep chanting. They don't move from their place. <coughs> uh, all right. Sagua san fa, sagua san fa, sagua san fa. I guess I run across the bridge. You scurry across. The reaching hands come nowhere close. Cross the bridge, but then stop in the middle. The hands reach for you, but they can't go high enough to grab you. Guys, I think these things are actually safe, except for the guardrails. Maybe they're like a safety net. If you fall, they catch you. Elvis, I look for a rock like the size of my foot and then check it down to the hands. A few of the hands catch the rock, and then some others rise up and fight violently to take it. With some splashing and a bit of scuffle, they pull it under. The water's calm for about three seconds, and then the forest of hands rises up to reach for you again. Oh, actually, I might be wrong. They might drag you under. You probably don't want these things to touch you. Are you guys coming? You're missing some really good chanting in here. Jeez, I'm coming, Mom. You enter the yurt and find Paul there chanting along with some blind guys in purple robes. All right, Lowry, you stand there. Mason, you stand over there. Uh, Dave, you stand right there. Paul, who's Dave? Our seventh guy. You haven't been formally introduced, you know, but we gotta have seven guys. It's numerically significant. We could have done five people and had a pentagram. Yeah, Paul. Or we could do six guys and have a hexagon. What's a seven-person shape? 
A septagon? That doesn't sound like a real shape. Seven is how many days it took God to make the Earth. He only took six days. He rested on the seventh day. Yeah, by your logic, Paul, the seventh guy should stay home and watch TV. All right, you know what? Uh, you're probably right. Dave, you should go home and watch TV. Okay, bye, Dave. Now there's just six of us here. It's a biblical septagon. Anyway, we were just in the middle of Sagua Sanfa. The chant changes, and the room lights up in flashes of orange and red. Uh, excuse me, we appear to be at the end of Sagua Sanfa. We're now just entering Hazua Hata. Gentlemen, please take your places. Hazua Hata, Hazua Hata. Arrange myself in the circle. Me too. Hazua Hata, Hazua Hata. Hazua Hata. Oh, hang on, it looks like one of our bones is out of place. In fact, I think I see the problem. It might be a little cracked. Let me just, uh... Go check the structural integrity here. I grab a handful of bones. As soon as you touch them, terror leaps up your arm and into your bladder. Your legs go numb and you feel the primal urge to wet yourself and cry. Run. Let go of the bones and run out of the yurt, trailing urine. Ah! Uh, Paul? Cross the bridge, head for the door. As you're running across the bridge, you see the door is closed. Try and pull it open. Is it stuck? It is. And several of the runes carved on the door are glowing the same color as the bones were. Uh, Paul? You're missing out on Hazwa Hata. It's getting really lively. I think this might be the best part. They change the chant again. Now the bones glow purple, and with each chant, the light grows. Taki, taki to, taki, taki to. This is pretty cool. Okay, adjust myself and jog back across the bridge. Uh, so sorry about that. I just, uh,. Forgot that you shouldn't touch the hot magic bones with your bare hands. So it's, it could hurt your soul and stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> where, where, where are we at now? Taki Takito. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, taki Takito, Taki Takito. Taki Takito, Taki Takito, Taki Takito. The blind men stop chanting abruptly. Excuse me, sorry. Taki, that was, that was very unprofessional, Mason. You're supposed to stop at the crescendo. Sorry. I hate when we're training the new acolytes. Your timing was awful, but at least you're early to the ritual. Now, the most important part. Prepare the sacrifice. Oh. Ah, yeah. The sacrifice. Yes. Prepare the sacrifice. Already. I thought we had a few more Taki Taki Toes to go. No, if you do it too many times, you mess up the ritual. You give it too much power. See, this is why I said we shouldn't have the Alkalites chant with us. The odds of things going wrong go through the roof. But oh no, Michael says they need to learn. Hands-on training is the best. Well, I mean, you and Michael are obviously at odds. Because, uh, he told us that you'd do the sacrifice. Yes, it's my duty. Hurry up and bring them to me and we'll cast them upon the bones. No, no, I mean, Michael said that you would be the sacrifice. He... What? Yeah. Yeah. He what? I, I didn't have the authority. This is all uh, because to... I'm gunning for his position, isn't it? Well, all of you take a good look. This is what ambition gets you around here. Fine. Throw me on the bones. But see, in 10 or 20 years, if there's any amount of ability to get things done, nothing but a bunch of sheep, the whole lot of you. Sorry, sir. Uh, I, I wish we knew enough to know how to feel. Oh, you'll find out. You'll find out one day. All right. All right, lift me up. I'm ready to become one with our Lord. Gonna take it all out on you when I'm one with him, that's for sure. Uh, of course, sir. Uh, how do we hold you up? The other two priests help you pick this third guy up. Together, you all lift him before the bones, but before you can toss him, he says, Wait, I'd like one final word before I go. Hang on. Hang on. Then he farts. There it is! Remember it for the purest expression about how I feel about you and everything. You barely know us, sir. And yet I still hate you! Yeah, yeah, especially more now. Don't ruin it. Go ahead, throw me in, you ingrates. And everyone together tosses this man into a pile of purple glowing bones. He swells like a balloon and then bursts into horrible gore and viscera. But instead of it flying outward, it sucks inward like a black hole, reshaping itself into a humanoid form. It struggles and it fights against itself until its face begins to form. Soon the bones are gone, consumed completely into this process, and standing before you is none other than Paul's alleged Uncle Boehner. He stands up straight and tall on the pedestal, now looking full of life, his muscles rippling. He looks around the room, and then he bellows, Where is my snack tray? 
You notice the cultists have their heads bowed to the floor. Paul's Uncle Boehner? Uncle Boehner! You made it! Oh, what a surprise twist! Just like you to fake your death and appear at the last second! Wow, well, you did it again! Wait... Wait a minute! Uh, you guys are the ones who answered that Facebook ad! Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, we followed your plan to the letter, made it straight here, and we were just about to steal those bones, but then you appeared. And I guess the bones are inside you now. Congrats on another successful heist! Where is Horatio? Why are all three of these guys here? Where is Horatio? One of the cultists says, Oh, we sacrificed him, Lord. You sacrificed Horatio? Boehner yells. He raises up his hands. Lightning sparks from his fingers and strikes the two cultists next to you guys. They both turn into marshmallow peeps. Then they burst into flames. Idiots! You shall be no servants of mine. Boy, that's a good call, Uncle. Those guys were incompetent. They had no idea who we were at all. Fooled them from the start. Fooled their pants off. In fact, we're, we're probably the smartest people in this room and would make excellent servants. I am not your uncle. And the name I gave wasn't even Boehner. It was Mick Boehner, you idiot. Wait, Paul. Is this guy not your uncle? I did mention he was senile. You fools were meant to come here thinking you had one over on us. And straight to the sacrifice pens you'd go. How on earth are you standing before me? We, we passed all the trials. Yeah, we battled the draggler. I shot a guard. He, he didn't shoot a guard. Yes, I did. I shot him. We released Marty from Marty's mattress store. You released Marty? No one is supposed to release Marty. He's being punished for eternity. Did you know his name's not actually Marty? Silence! It's Peter. And do you know my real name? Do you know half the danger that you're in? I haven't known what's going on since, like... High school. I dropped out of high school. I didn't even know what was going on then. I liked the skateboard, but I really wasn't very good at it. You are standing before Lord Bonesmell himself. No, you aren't. We saw Lord Bonesmell hosting a bingo tournament. Uncle Boehner, the doctor talked to us about this. You're referring to one of my fragile descendants. I am the Lord Bonesmell, the first and the greatest of my line. Yeah, well, if that were true... I'd like to point out that we are very good alkalites, and we've already learned the chants, like Sagua San Fa, Sagua San Fa. Lord Bonesmell lights up, and his muscles ripple as you chant. Stop that! Well, okay, alright, alright, but hear me out. We also learned Hazua Hata, Hazua Hata. He grows a few inches, and his muscles swell. I said stop! And, and, we learned Taki Takito, Taki Takito. Do you not know what stop means? His hair grows longer and fuller. Hang on, let me get down from this pedestal, for goodness sake. What, is it like a you get too much power and then you explode kind of thing? No, no, I just get taller and wider and my hair gets longer and more full and then it's just hard to fit through doorways. The chants only make me more powerful. Paul, he grabs you and then he lifts you above his head. Oh, I've got the magical potential to do anything I like, but let me explain something to you. He carries you outside the yurt. Hey, Lowry. Check it out. I hop up on the pedestal. Okay, do the chant. Sagua san fa, sagua san fa. Do you see this lake? Boehner asks you, Paul. Uh, turn me around, please. I'm, I'm upside down. He turns you around. Mason, your body is beginning to glow with magic power. You can feel yourself growing stronger. Do you see the lake? Bonesmell demands. Yeah, I can see it now. I saw it when I came in. And yet it likely never crossed your mind what you were really looking at. I mean... A massive cleaning bill. I could not personally afford the number of pool boys that you would need. Shut make. up, idiot! This'll be your last lesson and you'd better appreciate it. Hazua hatta, hazua hatta. Mason, you grow taller. Your muscles swell. You feel as if you could lift an ox. Look, it was a lot to take in, okay? But animal instincts being what they are, the first thing you notice is the smell. Oh, yes. The smell. So many rotting corpses. You must understand what you see before you is a battery. Taki, takito, taki, takito. Mason, you sprout a beautiful head of hair. It is just a luxurious ocean of it. Ah, oh, sweet. This is great. Okay, do me. All right, get on the pedestal. Here we go. You see, a single human body cannot contain all the power that I crave. I've discovered the secret to eternal life. I remove my own bones, then feed them with the power of the lake. It's a battery, you see. But what powers the lake? Zombie. Life. Every yeah, stupid little bingo tournament my grandchildren throw, every servant who breaches his contract, every time some unwitting thief lets themselves down here, 
We toss wounded, mewling, begging fools into the lake, where they then are taken in and become one with my power. Taki Takito, Taki Takito. Larry, you are now also a beautiful, full-haired Adonis. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna rob so many gas stations like this. You could probably be a runway model, you know? I could do both. The people love a scandal. Elvis, I leave the yurt. There was never a heist. You were never gonna steal the bones. All that was gonna happen was that you would feed the lake. Now make amends with any gods you believe in. Not that it'll save you. I tackle Lord Bonesmell! Ugh! The two of you go down together. What? Who dares attempt to grapple the mighty? Sit on him and make him eat dirt. Rub dirt in his hair. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Get it, boys. Say Uncle Boehner. Say your Uncle Boehner. You made a particularly dense decision today. Grab more dirt in his mouth. <laughs> Throw him in the lake, guys. Throw him in. Oh, that's a really good idea. You're going in the lake, nerd. I pull his pants down around his ankles. Okay, he's wearing like a loincloth or whatever. <laughs> Into the lake. I throw him. Yeah, I help launch him. The grasping undead hands rise up and catch bone smell as he nears the water. He thrashes against them, but they swarm from all sides, overwhelming him, dragging him down below the surface. A few minutes pass, and the surface of the lake goes placid. We did it! Yeah. What do we do? I think we drowned that guy. Aw, oh, man. I always knew I was going to take a bullying prank too far one day. Aw, oh, guys! We defeated Lord Bonesmell, who was secretly my Uncle Boehner this entire time! Or, uh, the reverse of that. I can't believe how he led my whole family on. I'm crushed. Oh, is that what happened? Man, wizards are evil. That was a lot of trouble to go through to be evil. Yeah, it really was. He really was. Uh, but hey, now we can use his powers for good. How'd you guys get buff like this? Oh, you just stand on that pedestal back there and I chant the magic words. Ah, uh, great. Okay, all right. Do me too. I sit on the pedestal. Do we have to? I'll do it. Sagua san fa, sagua san fa. Paul, you two are now a beautiful sculpture of a man, with hair that would make a painting jealous. Well, it's not exactly the bones, but it is the power the bones supposedly had, and with faces like this, you know, people are just gonna give us money. Of course. It all makes sense now. The power of Lord Bonesmell is just being hot. Everyone has to obey you. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that's the full untapped potential, but we'll roll with that. I mean, anyway, let's tear that door open. You guys tear the large door, clear off its hinges, and find Peter the Tireman waiting. He goes, Oh, oh my Lord Bonesmell! And he kneels on the ground. What do you mean, Lord Bonesmell? There's three of us. Yes, yes! Shh. I, I've split myself off into three, so I can better rule this place. Marty, the time for absolution is now! I forgive your sins, and command you to lead us out of the cave! Ah, uh, at once, sir, thank you! Peter gets up and walks you through the caves. If you stumble across anyone, they all immediately fall to the ground in worship of you. Eventually, you arrive at the entrance to the chambers. Kick the door open. There was a guy on the other side trying to repair the door lock, and he gets violently shoved away. You see the younger Lord Bonesmell, the one from the bingo tournament, standing there in the hall. He's in his underwear. He shouts, Oh no! The elder Lord Bonesmell! And he drops to his knees. The guards all look confused and then follow suit. Indeed, it is I, Lord Bonesmell! And these two are also me, Lord Bonesmell and Lord Bonesmell. You are pleased to gaze upon my resplendence three times. Uh, but Lord, what are you doing from your chambers? Have I displeased you? I was about to deliver the results of the bingo tournament. Oh, I want to hear that. Who won that, actually? The Birthly Sisters, Lord. Again. Hey, is that guard that helped us still here? Yeah, they pulled him aside and left him there to die. Point to the guard. Hey, what happened here? Oh, uh, an incident, Lord. The guard has passed away. We were going to do a burial. Nonsense! That's a good guard right there. He's asked one of our people. You take that guy down to the bone pedestal and you chant the rites at him until he wakes up. It's a fine dude. My lord? Did I stutter or not? Yeah, don't make me do it myself. Because once I get blood on me, there's no excuse to not get more blood on me. I'll just get blood everywhere. It's going to be awful. Oh, oh, no, no, of course, sir. No need for that. Bone Smell the Younger snaps his fingers and two guards pick the dead guy up and rush him into the caves behind you. Now get us a horse and carriage. I'd like to go to the opera. Make sure you get a box seat. I need enough room for my friend here, Marty, who's part cow. You wish to go out, sir? Yes, I'm going to the opera. But, Lord, you said you'd give us warning and that there would be signs. You're getting a warning. This, this is a 20-minute warning. How long does it take to get your pants on, bone smell? Uh, uh, oh, God. He gets up and he runs off. Hey, can we go up and say hi to the Birthly Sisters? 
You go upstairs and you find the sisters are on the way to their car. Oh, hey, ladies! I heard you did a good job tonight. Oh, look! It's you guys. I thought you were vaporized. Us? No way. We're like cockroaches. We just hid under the fridge. Yeah, that. And also, I can shoot transdimensional missiles out of my hands. Watch. You stick your finger up in the air and a gout of flame flies straight up, then explodes like a firework. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. Well, we can now. See, we went down in the basement and stole Lord Bonesmell's powers. You did? I had no idea that was an option. Darn, here I felt like I had my eyes on the prize, but look at you three. Well, ladies, eyes still on the prize. They all think that we're Lord Bonesmell, but we can't keep up that ruse forever. You helped us get in, and you know the way that this whole thing works, so how about we do the same and get you access to all Lord Bonesmell stuff? You know, it's like treacherous advisors. We'll keep you on, and we'll be sexy figureheads, maintaining the lie, but you can actually run everything. <laughs> I knew there was something I liked about you. Tell you what, let's make a night of it. We'll have the details hammered out by morning. Perfect. I hope you like the opera, because that's where I asked to take us. And we haven't been to the opera in years. What do you say, girls? The other sisters nod their heads, and you guys ride off into the night into some sort of post-midnight opera house. Yay! I like that I got the ability to shoot stuff out of my fingers in the end. So what's our next game idea? I've got one. It's called Escape the Flavor Zone. It's gonna be spicy. Get excited. That was the Big Bingo Bone Heist. If you enjoyed that, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find me under Don Somewhere. Just a little bit of support makes a lot of difference, so I really appreciate those of you guys pitching in. If you do support me on Patreon, I make an attempt to have stuff on there early. I don't always, but I try. If you enjoy my sense of humor, you can also find me on other places on the internet. You can find me on YouTube and so on. I have a website, donsomewhere.com, that has links to several of those places where I have been. And that's uh, pretty much it, so I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one. And uh, have a wonderful week.